All right, what's up? Uh, I want to make sure you can hear me. Chase, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Can you hear me? Uh, you're pretty low. All right, that's easy fix. One second. Boom, 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 boom. All right, what about that? Uh, it's a little better, I guess. Here, no, it's easy to turn up. I'll turn up more. Sounds like you're not using your good mic. Sounds like you're using your computer mic, but maybe my stuff's just turned down or something. Try now. What about now? That's a little better, yeah. I can go up a little more. No, that's good. Can y'all hear him every good? Pretty good. All right, and uh, Bryson is entering the room. So his audio is connecting, and then uh, we'll let Chase take over. Now, whoever wants to kick it off can go first. I don't care if Bryson wants to go or if he wants me to go. We can do it either way. It don't matter. Okay. How you doing, man? What's up? What's up? Chilling, chilling. All right. Welcome over here uh, to my channel. To So tonight's debate, as you guys know, is with Bryson Gray. The topic is who keeps the Torah? Bryson describes himself as a Torah-keeping Christian, and uh, his channel is linked. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Bryson. We did an interview not too long ago, so a few months ago. Um, but this is going to be different. It's going to be a, a formal, structured debate. Uh, it's going to be timed. Chase is our moderator. So, Chase, do you want to flip a coin or something, or how you want to do it? Sure. Uh, we could flip a coin unless you guys, one of you guys wants to go just, first. Just flip a coin. All right, cool. All right, I got a cap here. Heads will be Bryson, tails will be Jay. <laughs> okay. It's heads. Bryson will go first. We'll do um fifteen minute opening statements, and then um seven minute rebuttals, and then open floor for about an hour, and then a uh, seven minute closing statements. Okay. Have you already went off? Whenever, whenever you want to start, I can uh, I can start the time. Oh, so we already live. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I can start, you can start time. Um, so for my opening statement, the first thing I want to do is me and Jay sort of have trouble titling the thing because I I, I don't think I feel like we was missing each other. Um, but it's about do we have to keep Torah or not? So I don't know if I don't know if Jay as an Orthodox Christian believes they do keep Torah. Uh, but Torah is, if anybody doesn't know, it's the first five books of Moses, and it's the law. Whenever the Bible says the law, it's referring to that. When it says the prophets and the writing, it's referring to the rest of Tanakh. Now, secondly, as a Torah-keeping Christian, I know that might come as a shock. A lot of people don't believe Christians can do so. Um, I already understand I'm, I have the unpopular position in this scenario. I'm used to it. It's what I do. It's what I'm known for. Uh, but somebody got to do it. But with that being said, I've probably been in like a hundred of these types of debates. People minds rarely change. Um, people in the chat are going to support whoever they are to support beforehand. Their mind's not going to change. Um, so then the question is, why am I doing this? I'm really only doing this for the remnant, uh, for the people that have an open mind and just want to hear somebody out and hope I get the same respect, which I feel like I will with a moderator that I gave Jay Dyer when he was on my channel. I let him... Uh, tell us about Orthodox Christianity without argument, without interrupting, without anything. Um, so you have to give people a fair shot. Now, Jay Dyer, who I like, by the way, he's known for debating. Uh, typically, when it comes to Christian history, he's very good at that, period, point blank. But this debate for me is, is really just one question, and it's a question that everybody knows I'm going to ask. And I don't have to play a secret hand because nobody can sufficiently answer the question. And Jay knows my question because I asked him this publicly at an event. And it's about what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. And it's Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 21, with verse 17 being one of the most popular uh, things that Jesus said that Christians take out of context. Now, when I asked him this in person, 
Uh, let me just read the part. Until heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all is fulfilled. And the verse clearly tells you that or all things can't be fulfilled or accomplished until heaven and earth pass. That's clear in the text. No other way to interpret it. Um, and Jay's response, I always remember at the event was Luke 24, 44. And I could be wrong, so hopefully he'll correct me in his opening statement, but uh, he tried to say that in Luke 24, 44, it implied that everything had already been fulfilled. Um, now, that is clearly impossible since heaven and earth hasn't passed yet, which no Christian would say heaven and earth has passed uh, because Second Peter warns you of heaven and earth passing, and we know heaven and earth doesn't pass until Revelation 21, if that's a part of your canon. But it doesn't matter what you believe in. We know heaven and earth hasn't passed. And the issue with this question is, is simple. If I'm not taking it out of context, then Jesus said what he said. Now, let me predict how typically these conversations go. You tell a Christian, Matthew 5, 17 to 21, they attempt to first say it's out of context. We read the entire context together, and everybody knows I pretty much know the Sermon on the Mount by heart. And they then can't say it's out of context, and then they run to Paul. They go to Paul. Uh, and they try to use Paul subconsciously to argue against Jesus because you couldn't take, you couldn't claim what I said about Jesus was out of context. That's a very dangerous thing to do inherently. But it's so beautiful that the Bible warns us about these types of people. <laughs> In 2 Peter 3.16, the Bible literally says ignorant and unstable people will take Paul out of context and use him to their own destruction. And Peter actually calls these people unscrupulous people that are attempting to make you lose your firm commitment. And it tells you that knowing this beforehand, be on your guard. So whenever people jump straight to Paul to argue with Jesus, instead of confirming or denying what Jesus said, I find it to be very, very interesting. With Jay, I'm going to assume he's going to go the more historical route. Well, who gave you the Bible? Uh, and, 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 the church has the correct interpretation and you can't interpret it without the church. Now, if I'm not mistaken, right, I know a bit about Christian history, admittedly not as much about Jay Dyer. I'm more so I know scripture. I know the Bible. But if I'm not mistaken, the 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 council, the first council for the canon and people don't know this different canons happen over different councils was the Council of Rome, if I'm not mistaken, which was in the late 300s, which could be wrong. That's based off memory, though. Um, late 300s. I find it interesting because uh, Iranius and 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 Pap Papius was that his name? Papius of Heropolis, they clearly uh, affirmed the Gospels. Matter of fact, uh, Iranius was pretty much arguing with people that was trying to say only one of the Gospels were accurate. And he was already saying all four Gospels was accurate, and that was hundreds of years earlier than any of these canons. So the scriptures <clears throat> are the scripture, and I feel like that's a side argument. I feel like it's a side argument. Um, because it has nothing to do with the point. If you believe that your church chose this canon, then you need to believe in what it says. Um, so, again, <clears throat> my main question is Jesus, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 17 to 21. And I hope this question will get answered. And I'm about to say it to y'all off memory. Hopefully I get it correct. I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets I came to fulfill. And Christians think fulfill means abolished, even though he clearly said otherwise. And then he says, for verily I say unto you, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all is accomplished. And then he says that if you nullify one of the least of these commandments and teach others to do the same thing, meaning teach others to nullify one of the least of the commandments, um, then you will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. This is Jesus' words, and this is talking about the future. So you can't say this changed when Jesus died on the cross because Jesus is clearly giving you something that's going to happen in the future. He said, but if you teach keeping the commandments and teach others to do so and keep them, keep them yourself, then you will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For verily I say unto you, your, unless your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. And then for people that try to claim that he's only referring to the Ten Commandments, that is impossible because then right after this, he goes on to do what people call put a fence around the Torah or make the law more strict. Uh, and in these things from the that he takes from the law, 
almost half of them are not even in the Ten Commandments to begin with. So obviously he's referring to more than the Ten Commandments, which he made clear when he said law or the prophets. Uh, prophets are obviously after the law. This this consists of the this this is what the Tanakh consists of. So the context is very clear, and I think this is an interesting thing. So my one question is, what did Jesus mean by that? If if I'm taking it out of context, my second question is, will you be called great or least in the kingdom of heaven according to Jesus Christ? Um, and uh, I will yield the rest of my time. I don't know how long I just went. Hey, you went about uh, eight minutes, so you're you're crushing it. Yeah, right under eight minutes. So, Jay, whenever you want, you got 15 minutes on the clock. All right, yeah, thank you for coming. Let's, um, let's get into my opening statement before I address some of the points that Bryson made there. One thing I would say is that the argument that I gave wasn't in the live event from Luke 24. It was Luke 21, which locates the context of everything that Jesus is saying in that chapter about the destruction of Jerusalem because Luke's written for a Gentile audience. It's referring to that con that that time period, that group of people standing in front of him. Jesus says they would see all of these things fulfilled. And Luke is very important because his account of the Olivet Discourse, the destruction of Jerusalem, is more specific for a Gentile audience explaining what's going on. So all those statements about not fleeing Jerusalem uh, on the Sabbath that I saw Bryson was kind of referencing on uh, Twitter the other day, those are actually statements about the 70 AD destruction of Jerusalem, a very famous event that fulfills many of these Old Testament passages about, as Jesus says, all things written in the prophets will come upon this generation, that being the generation that he was speaking to. This is why he says in so many places that the kingdom of God is in your midst. The kingdom of God is here. It is now. And the kingdom of God is identified with the church in Matthew 16. So the church is that kingdom. It's established at Christ's ministry. It's also established at the Feast of Pentecost. And that's interesting because if you look at Pentecost, it's another thing that proves this point because I, I feel strongly that if I were to read Joel, particularly Joel 2, about in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will see visions, etc., Bryson, in his uh, uh, exegesis, I feel like he would ascribe that to the end times, much like he would describe Luke 21 and Matthew 24 to be explicitly or solely about the last days. And yet, Joel 2 is cited as fulfilled in the event of Pentecost in Acts 2. Again, powerful proofs of what we call partial preterism, not full preterism, which is the idea that everything mentioned is fulfilled. Events like the bodily resurrection, events like the destruction of Satan, uh, death and hell being thrown into the lake of fire, etc. Clearly those things have not been fulfilled. However, the destruction of the temple, which is an immense his redemptive historic event, is a fulfillment of multiple Old Testament passages, particularly the warnings that Israel is given in the law in Deuteronomy and in Leviticus about having the covenant curses poured out upon them if they reject God. Their final full rejection of God was in the rejection of the person of God himself, the Logos, when he became incarnate, as John says in John 1, in the beginning was, what, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. That means that Christ is the second person of the God, had eternally begotten of the Father, as John says later in that chapter, that even when he was walking around with us, he was in the bosom of the Father. And that's why every chapter in the book of John goes on to describe either references to the deity of Christ or to the deity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the, the, the book of John is a powerful uh, testament in the New Testament to the full divinity of Christ. And I say that because, and I, don't, I know the debate is not about the Trinity, but Bryson does not accept the doctrine of the Trinity. And that matters because we're going to see who gave the law. It's Jesus that gave the law to Moses on Mount Sinai, and Jesus himself makes this very clear in the book of John. Before we get to that, I, want to, I do want to talk about uh, Bryson's statement <clears throat> about the history of things. If Bryson is going to argue that his uh, chief contention is Matthew 5, the Beatitudes, and so forth, this assumes, yes, that Matthew is an authoritative text. But there's nothing in Matthew's gospel that tells us that Matthew, the disciple of Christ, wrote the book. And certainly apostolic authorship is important. It does matter. 
In fact, it matters a big, uh, it matters a lot whether or not he wrote that because he's supposedly uh, an eyewitness and a person there uh, in the presence of Christ seeing all of this stuff. And so <clears throat> Bryson is correct to cite Papias. Papias is the earliest witness that we have that it's Matthew the, the disciple. That's an patristic tradition. That's not something in the text itself. And so Bryson, without realizing it, is relying on the tradition and testimony of the church fathers whom he does not accept. In fact, he even cited Irenaeus, and I had to get Irenaeus off the shelf because in Irenaeus' Against Heresies, who was a bishop in the Orthodox Church, by the way, if you look at book three of Irenaeus' treatise, written in 180 AD, Irenaeus goes into depth talking about the tradition of apostolic succession in the churches and how it's necessary to look to churches like the Bishopric of Rome as well as others to see that apostolic tradition is, is inseparable from the gospel, the deposit of faith, and thus knowing the scriptures. So Bryson just admitted that he has to refer to Orthodox saints and church fathers in the first few centuries to even know that Matthew is part of the Bible. So you'll notice this book here that we call the Bible. It's made up of many, many, it's a book of books. But this didn't fall out of heaven into Bryson's lap. It didn't come to him in a vacuum. It came to him historically. It was transmitted and passed down, much the same way that the Jews transmitted and passed down not just the written Torah, but also the oral Torah, which Jesus refers to in cites in many places. And so, yes, my first challenge is that Bryson can cite passages, but I need to know why, on his view, I'm supposed to accept that he even has access to or a basis to know the right canon if he's divorced it from the church who made the decision to put that together. And he's correct that one of the early witnesses to the canon that we accept is the uh, African councils that are confirmed by Rome, uh, the canons of uh, Carthage, the African Code, as it's called, that eventually passed into, for the Orthodox Church, what we call the Council of Trollo, and it's appended together in the 5th and 6th councils according to the 7th council. So the 7th council basically says, we accept Trollo and all of those canonical lists, and that is in this book of the Shaft Set, you can see it right here, where it lists, uh-oh, none of the books that a Protestant accepts, or excuse me, it lists the deuterocanonical books that Protestants don't accept. Why does that matter? Well, because it just simply shows that Protestants of all forms, all shapes, have the wrong canon. They look to the church of history to give them accurate tradition when it comes to people like Papias or Irenaeus in, re in regard to citing the Gospels. But why does, why does Bryson care what Irenaeus says when Bryson doesn't accept anything else Irenaeus says as a bishop in the Orthodox Church? What we might cite any other church father that disagrees. So what if one or two church fathers cites this or that gospel? That doesn't tell me which one I'm supposed to follow, especially if there's conflicting canons, and there absolutely are. We can give multiple lists of canons in the first six centuries of the church. Now let's get back to the Bible itself. The Torah was given to Moses, but in the Torah, disputes are assumed to be uh, something that will occur for Israel. And so Moses set down a, a, a pattern of how disputes would be solved. This is the elders, this is the high priest, etc., who are put in place to make, to judge, uh, ultimately, or at the beginning, it's Joshua and the 70 elders in Numbers 11, Deuteronomy 21. This is why we see, for example, the laying on of hands of Joshua in Numbers 27. This laying on of hands and tr transmission of authority in the Old Testament is precisely what Jesus does as the founder of the true spiritual Israel, the fulfillment of historic Israel in appointing apostles, which he says in Luke 10, 16, he who hears you hears me. That means that succession of authority that Christ has, that by the way, he gave the law to Moses because he's the one that spoke to Moses. In John 5, especially when we get through John 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, when Jesus is disputing with the Pharisees, his argument against them is that no one saw the Father in the Old Testament, in Exodus, when there was the manifestation of God at Mount Sinai. That was not the father. He says it was me. Moses wrote about me. Moses and Abraham believed in me. So he is identifying himself with the manifestation in the burning bush. If you go back to Exodus 3 and compare that with Exodus 23, you will notice that God says, 
I will put my name, my divine name of Yahweh, in my angel, the messenger angel of the Lord that speaks in the bush, that goes before Israel in the book of Exodus. Likewise, Moses goes up on the mountain, and according to Paul in 2 Corinthians, he eats a meal with God. Now, no one sees the Father, so Moses wasn't eating a meal with the Father. He's eating a meal with the Lord, the angel of the Lord, the second person of the Godhead, who is a theophany in the Old Testament in many, many, many passages, dozens of passages. We can go back to Genesis, the appearance to Abraham. Genesis 18, Abraham has a meal with God. He's identified as like Yahweh the Lord. How do you eat with God? Oh, it's just like Moses going up on the mountain and eating the meal with God. Who? What God? Jesus. Ergo, Jesus is the one giving the covenantal meal there and the law there. This is the giving of the Mosaic law. The point of this is that the law, all of it, has a telos, a purpose, that Bryson has missed. It is not, can I talk the Gentiles into believing in the ceremonial commands and all 600 or whatever commands of the Torah. Because we know that that can even literally be kept because there is no temple. In fact, Genesis 49 predicted that when the Messiah comes, the scepter will depart from Judah. The, then comes Shiloh to whom the nations will look. That means one of the signs of the coming of the Messiah is the removal of the Davidic lineage. It ends. It's done. Why? Because he is the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant. He's also the fulfillment of the Noahic covenant. The Noahic covenant is key because it shows us that righteousness is not had by Mosaic law. It doesn't mean the Mosaic law is bad. It has a purpose. But Bryson has again missed that purpose because Jesus is the living Torah, the living law, the new Moses, you see. What about those commands? Do we keep those commands? Yes, we do. In fact, there are multiple references throughout the New Testament to all kinds of ceremonial commands. Many of those ceremonial commands are cited by Paul, for example, in Corinthians, when he says not to muzzle an ox when he's treading out the grain. How does Paul apply that? Paul specifically says, is it oxen God is concerned about? Ergo, no. He wrote that for our benefit, he says. And the meaning of the passage, the spiritual meaning of this ceremonial command, this penal sanction command in the book of Deuteronomy, is that ministers who are symbolized by the oxen should have right to the field that they work. They should be able to eat from the work that they do. In other words, ministers can make money. That's Paul's point. Multiple times we see these principles applied in the New Testament of ceremonial passages that are not done away with. They are still kept. It's just that Bryson doesn't understand how they're kept. They're kept in a different way than he thinks they're kept. And in fact, his understanding of the Jewish interpretation itself is wrong. The Mosaic law was not given to the nations, to the Gentiles. It was given to the people of Israel for them to teach the nations about the true spiritual pedagogy and meaning of the commands. Paul says in Corinthians that uncircumcision and circumcision, neither of these things matter. The keeping of the law is what matters. So you see later additions like circumcision and Mosaic law do not make a person righteous, especially when the question is the inclusion of the Gentiles. Bryson may not be aware of this, but his dispute, his question was already solved in Acts 15 when they had the council describing and deciding how Gentiles could come into the church, into the covenant, and be made right with God. And the decision is that, well, we ought not require anything more than was required of Noah. If Noah could be made righteous before God, before circumcision, and before the ceremonial laws given to, Ab to, to Moses, then Gentiles can be in Christ on the basis of the pattern of the covenant given unto Noah. It's a very simple argument. And what did Jesus say? Here, he who hears you, hears me. The Holy Spirit is given in Acts 2 and Pentecost. That's the spirit that Jesus said in John 16, he would send that would guide the church into all truth. And so unless he wants to himself pit Paul uh, and the apostles against what Jesus said, then he needs to understand holistic interpretation of the whole Bible. We don't just read passages or chapters without understanding the context of the entire Bible. Is that it? One minute. The entire Bible gives us a holistic picture and message. 
from Genesis throughout the covenants all the way up to the new covenant, you can't understand the totality of the Bible without each one of those successive covenants. Paul says in Corinthians that every one of those promises, covenant promises, is yea in Christ. Christ is the telos of the law. That's why we don't have a temple. That's why we don't do animal sacrifices. And so if Bryson had read Hebrews or Galatians, he would know that the things that he thinks are still applicable are actually fulfilled. And I would go even further and say that not only does he not keep them, the Orthodox Church actually does still keep many of these commands because we have temples. Hebrews 13 says that we have an altar in the churches that those that serve at the tabernacle have no right to eat. That means there's still an altar. Peter says that we are the Melchizedekian priesthood, priests in Christ. We still have a priesthood. Orthodox churches are called temples. We still have temples. Awesome. And uh, before we get into rebuttals, Jay, could you pin Bryson? I think because I was the last to speak that the other camera was on me. So we do apologize for that. And then um, I don't know how it works on Zoom, but if we could pin Bryson and then um, once we get that done, just let me know and uh, and then we can he's get pinned. going. He's pinned. Go ahead. I Perfect. saw him on the screen. I saw him, so he should be fine. Perfect. Bryson, uh, whenever you want to start, you have seven minutes for rebuttal. Only seven minutes. Oh, man. I wish I could use some of the time I yielded, but it's okay. I don't need seven minutes. If anybody goes back uh, to my opening statement, he debated precisely and exactly how I said he would. He never answered the question about Matthew 5, and he's not going to tell you why he didn't answer it, but it's because he can't. Now, he went on to imply, first he said Luke 21, and I recently watched the video of when I answered the question at the live event, and you definitely said Luke 24. I could possibly be mistaken. We could fact check that. But you kept talking about things being fulfilled. But let's go back to Matthew 5, 17 through 21, which I knew was not going to get answered. This is why you made this thing about the whole Bible and jump straight to Paul, because this is what people typically do to try to use Paul to argue with Jesus. Jesus said, until heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all is accomplished. So if heaven and earth has not passed, everything can't be accomplished. That's very simple. And this is red letters. This is Jesus himself. And that is in context. So you have an issue. If you claim these things were fulfilled, has heaven and earth passed yet? And then you talked about these things about the uh, the temple uh, being destroyed so we can't keep uh, a lot of the commandments. That's absolutely correct. You are correct. This is the reason that Orthodox Jews do not give animal sacrifices in the temple. But your issue is the Tanakh have already discussed this in Hosea and 2 Samuel. Rendering of bulls is replaced with prayers of the lips because there was already a time where the temple was destroyed. So God had already put things in place uh, for these things to be happening, but that doesn't then nullify the commandments that are applicable to people outside of obviously priests, because a lot of the commandments do require a temple, but a lot, but a good amount of them also don't. So that doesn't change anything out. Uh, that doesn't change anything at all. Um, so when you say Jesus is the fulfillment, has heaven and earth passed yet? Jesus said that's required. So unless you can say that, you still have an issue on your hand, and I'm sure that's going to get avoided again. And the reason I brought up Papias and Irenaeus um, is not because I care much about their judgment. I'm so glad you brought it up exactly how I thought you would, because you admitted that Papias was the earliest, and we know that because of Irenaeus, uh, because uh, we only have fragments of, of writings from Papias. And uh, you have one issue. He didn't say he the one who said it was written by Matthew. Matter of fact, what Papias said is that the book of Matthew was originally written in Hebrew and people translated it the best they could. Now, there's arguments over what he meant by that because we don't have the full excerpt of what he said. But what that shows is people already thought it was Matthew. They been thought it was Matthew. And this is very early, as you already said. So uh, to claim that we need the church to tell us what it is, that would be interesting since people was already reading the Gospels. They were already doing it. Even before Papias, obviously, that has to be the case. Uh, so I find that very, <clears throat> very interesting. Uh, you talked about the Trinity. That's not the debate. Don't really care. You brought up Deuteronomy 28 and 29. Uh, I don't know if you knew them, them was the exact verses you were bringing up. But uh, the last verse of 29 said the hidden things 
uh, belong to uh, the Lord, but the revealed things belong to us and our children forever, that we fulfill all the words of this Torah or follow all the words of this Torah. That's once again off memory, so I probably got a word or two wrong. Uh, and you said Matthew 24 has already happened, but I think you switched it up a little bit later and said uh, that something's happened, something didn't, which I'm glad you did because Matthew 24 literally talks about Christ's return. So unless you're saying Jesus has already came back, that also wouldn't make sense scripturally. Now, as far as you taking Paul Clearly out of context, we talked about Galatians and he brought up Acts 15 and assume that I don't know these things. Very sad um, because Acts 15 is about Paul uh, helping the Gentiles turn to Christ. And I like that you brought up Noah because if you see the, the few laws that they had to do themselves, you need to figure out what that is in oral tradition that you like to talk about so much. But what's beautiful about the book of Acts is all these questions that you have are already answered. Paul himself later in Acts gave an animal sacrifice for himself and others. And this is after Jesus died and rose on the cross. And this is after Paul came to have accepted Jesus. So now you have to explain to me uh, what you said is true while Paul gave an animal sacrifice. Secondly, they were trying to kill Paul because they people were saying that Paul was teaching against the law. Paul then corrected them and said, Paul, Paul then corrected him and said he taught the law perfectly. Um, so the claims that y'all make about Paul are, the, are really literally the claims that was made in Acts, if you read it. Uh, which I find which I find hilarious. And then you brought up Galatians. Uh, and a problem when people read Paul, the reason why Peter has to tell you, uh, how long I got? You have about two and a half minutes. Okay, hopefully that's enough. Um, just stop me, I'll just end it, no matter. But um, the reason why a lot of people ignorantly uh, take Paul out of context, I'm not saying it to be disrespectful, that's the literal language Peter used, uh, is because with Paul, you can't read one line here and one line there. You have to read all five chapters of Galatians. You have to read all chapters of Romans. And what that means is Paul is literally the one in Romans 2 that said, it is not the hearers of the law that are righteous before God, but it is the doers of the law that are justified. And then he went on to tell you that the Gentiles kept the law without having the law, but they kept the requirements of the law. Uh, and he said it was written on their hearts, which is a reference to Jeremiah 31. And then you talk about Galatians. You need to know what he means. Because if you read Galatians 2, he says you have died to the law and now you live to God. What does live to God mean? Because Paul talks about not sinning. How can you sin if there's no law? Sin is transgression of the law, that law of Moses. And Paul explains this in Romans 6. If you need to understand what it means, I can help you out. Romans, and by the way, I have nothing on my screen or anything. This is all off memory, by the way. Uh, Romans 6, he literally tells you what he means when he says you're not under the law or you're dead to the law. He's literally saying you don't sin anymore. He explicitly states this in Romans 6. The reason you are not under the law, because he said law, uh, the law is the knowledge of sin. So if you die the same way Christ died, which is what Paul says verbatim in Romans 6, then you are also resurrected in the same way Jesus was resurrected. And what that means is you no longer sin. Your body parts are no longer used for unrighteousness. Sin no longer reigns in your mortal body. Then he literally tells you that's what not being under the law means anymore. That's why he also said, like I said a few chapters earlier, that Gentiles kept the law uh, without having it. So uh, I don't know if you understand what Paul is saying, but I hope I hope I helped a bit. Well, Jay, you have seven minutes on the clock. Yeah, I mean, the the level of reading comprehension here uh, and understanding what has been argued is is it's it's sad. It's, I feel like it's just flying past people's heads here. So. Uh, I didn't say that everything was fulfilled in the in the temple being destroyed. I said that heaven and earth passed away in the sense of Christ coming in judgment. That coming in judgment is what he mentions in Luke 21 and Matthew 24 to the generation standing in front of him, that they would see these signs. And yeah, I'm very familiar with the covenant curses in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. And those curses are applied in the book of Revelation because every one of those covenant curses rolls out upon the, the city that's identified in the book of Revelation as the place where our Lord was crucified. So in other words, the texts that you're talking about are referring to actually the destruction of Jerusalem. They're not talking about the end of the world, but they have a fulfillment also mirrored wise at the end of the world. And we know this from the abomination of desolation, which is cited in the book of Daniel and in the Maccabees. Did you know that that abomination of desolation already happened? Did you know it already happened? And so when Jesus is referring to it, 
He's saying that the same thing that happened in the destruction of the temple the first time and in the defilement of the temple of the Maccabees, that it's going to happen again in this day. This generation will not pass away until all of these things are fulfilled. So you just simply ignored and didn't listen to anything that I said, and you don't comprehend partial preterism because you confused it with full preterism. When the book of Hebrews describes the heaven and earth, the heavens and earth being rolled up like a scroll and passing away, the book is describing it from the citations in uh, texts like Isaiah. And it's saying that when the temple is removed, that will be the fulfillment of these things, you see. The whole book of Hebrews is about the passing away of the Mosaic administration in Israel. And you don't even apparently know that in 70 AD, that's what happened. It was destroyed. And the, the covenant went to the Gentiles. Jesus says in the Gospels that this nation will lose the kingdom and it will go to the Gentiles. That's the Gentile church that occurred in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth centuries, which, by the way, you don't have any connection to. Your sect doesn't exist back then. You don't have any connection to any of those people because your church isn't a church, a made up thing, you see. But Jesus said that the gates of hell would not prevail against his kingdom. His kingdom was set up in the apostles that he established, who he said, he that hears you, hears me. Who do you think ordained Irenaeus and Papias? Jesus' apostles ordained these men. That succession comes from them. And you said again, I'm glad that you cited Irenaeus and Papias because they cited the Gospels. That wasn't my challenge to you. The challenge was, why on your view are we supposed to care what Papias or Irenaeus, people that you think are heretics, say? Why would a heretic tell us the Bible and its books? In your view, please tell me that. I want to know when we get to the next section. Because it's pick and choose. It's arbitrary. Paul says the definition of a heretic is a person that picks and chooses. Your whole approach here is I'm going to pick and choose the sections of Jesus that I think are true because it aligns with my presuppositions. And it's actually you that sets Paul against Jesus. What I said harmonizes Paul and Jesus. We can't take verses or sections or people and pit them against one another. Paul did a sacrifice because the temple was not destroyed yet, and that was what we call a transition period. That's done when the temple's done. No longer do Jews or Christians worship in the temple because it's gone. That was the sign that's fulfilled in Daniel 9. Daniel 9 says when the Messiah comes, the temple's gone, eternal righteousness comes in. But in the New Testament, we have references to sacrifices that continue on, like the sacrifice of the Eucharist, which is in every Orthodox church, which has all of those things that you think you need. Temple, sacrifice, incense, vestments, all of these things that you're really into, which are in the Old Testament, they're in the Orthodox church. It is the continuity with those things. You don't have any continuity with any of that. You're relying again on our saints, Papias, Irenaeus, for getting the, the canon itself. You, had, you don't have any criteria for, for why I'm supposed to accept Matthew. Your criteria was because Papias cited it. So on what basis is one church father citing something? Tell me that that means it's inspired and part of the Bible. The Bible was decided as a canon centuries later. So all of your citations of Paul or Revelation or any of this stuff is simply your misunderstanding. It's totally out of accord with anything in the first thousand years of the church. So if you don't have any representatives of your views in those time periods, then you're what's called a sectarian. You're called a heretic. And I know the Old Testament very well. I gave you multiple verses about the deity of Christ in the Old Testament, Jesus giving the law to Moses. You ignored all that because you don't want to go there. You don't want to go into theophanies because that shows the purpose of the law. If there's a temple rebuilt, are you going to go to Israel and offer animal sacrifices? I know that you don't think it's necessary. I'm very aware of what rabbinical Judaism did. And I know it goes back to Ezra. And when there wasn't a temple, they said we can offer sacrifices of prayer. Okay. So then you're admitting that it's not absolutely necessary for salvation that we do animal sacrifices. But you're missing the obvious point of entire books of the New Testament, which is that you're an apostate and a heretic if you go back to doing those things. That's explicitly what Hebrews says. It says you've lost your salvation. Now, in your case, I'm not knocking you on a personal level, 
but you're not at all even in the church. You're, you have no connection to the branch, to the vine, to the sheepfold, to the tree, to the covenant. The covenant is given to the Gentiles, Jesus says, in that passage about the destruction of Jerusalem. All these things will come upon this generation, the people standing in front of him. You will see the temple raised to the ground, he says. That happened in 70 AD. That removes all of your stupid proof texts about fleeing on the Sabbath and doing this and that. The temple is the church. That's why Peter says the church is the temple. Jesus is the cornerstone. The marriage supper of the Lamb that's described in Revelation 5 and 6 is the divine liturgy. It's the Eucharist. What does John see when he looks into heaven? Vestments, incense, priests. That's fine. That's the Orthodox Church on earth. All right, we're gonna move into um we're gonna move into one hour of open floor. Uh debates get contentious, obviously. I expect some inter interruptions. That's totally fine. I'm gonna stay out of it. If things get to the point where you guys are talking over each other though, and we can't fully hear either of you, I will step in. Back and forth is totally fine. Uh you guys have one hour um for open dialogue. And I do want to remind people there will be a 30 minute QA um at the end of the debate. Well, so you guys can super, super chat in. Right. Yep, super chat in. Um, the Streamlabs link is in the description as well as in the chat. There you go, guys. So it's not it's not two minutes each. And then doing it, it's just we, it we just free, minutes, free, free, free flowing. Okay, real quick, do you want me to how do you guys want to do those two minutes each then? I thought it was total back total open floor. Okay, cool. Back and forth. Well then Br Bryson, go ahead. Okay. Um I find it funny. I wrote a few things you said now. You talked about reading comprehension. And you said, I'm not listening to you, which is funny because objectively speaking, you're not listening to me because everything you have the stuff you claim that I thought I've already explained it to you. The Paul, I find it funny. And I did this on purpose. It's funny. The Paul scriptures you brought up, I explained it to you. Not only did you not debunk it, I did that as a show of faith in hopes that you would answer my question about Matthew five and you still avoiding it as I predicted what would happen. Uh, also, we talked about like papers. Answer. I answered. You just didn't like it. No, you, you never answered because I asked you, has heaven and earth passed? And oh, matter of fact, uh, you said heaven and earth did. You, you said heaven and earth did. Yeah, pass. so I did answer. You just didn't yeah, like I, answer. I, I, do, I, do, I do apologize for that. My client, you said heaven and earth did pass. Show me a scripture that said heaven and earth has already passed. Show me any Bible scripture that says that, period. Yeah, so the book of Hebrews, uh, in Hebrews 1, and I'm saying that the book of Hebrews is about the removal of the earthly administration of the temple. Show me when the Bible says heaven and earth has passed. Please. I just said the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 1 talks about heaven and earth passing away. The book is about the removal of the temple. So I just want to be clear. Are you claiming that Hebrews 1 said heaven and earth has already passed away? It says the removal of the temple is the sign of heaven and earth passing away. I want I want, I want the words heaven and earth pa pass, passing away because in 2 Peter. That's not how the Bible works. That's how you think oh, it works. Oh, it is though. No, that's, it's not. I I no, that's how heretics it. think it works. Heretics think okay, that every so, literal. You, oh, okay, okay, so so we only believe what's explicit in the Bible, right? Right is, now, is that your I asked a question. You your best answer is to say you can't find it, and that and I, I, I will accept that answer. You say there's nothing. I said like, in you, Hebrews one, it's about he, the removal of the heavenly administration, the heavenly tell me, earth on earth. That's tell what me the, the, book verse, is, the whole book is about. That. So tell me the verse in Hebrews. Because Hebrews one is a, a pretty short chapter. Tell me the verse in Hebrews one that says heaven and earth has already passed. Which it verse says, says that? That heaven and earth will pass away. It'll be rolled up like a scroll. Yes, heaven and earth will pass away. It's all about so it's all about the future. No, no it's not. I, that's not what it's I asked. Talk, you. I did, yeah, well, Hebrews is talking about the destruction of the temple, which is still in the future. Hey, so real quick though, heaven and I'm earth being rolled up is what is meant in the temple administration being destroyed because the temple mm -hmm. is heaven on earth. You understand? It's a symbol of the whole universe, the three heavens. Yeah. So I, I find it interesting. So, so you're not listening. So you just blow past. No, that's I'm, two minutes. That was a two minute back and forth though. So I didn't talk for two minutes at all. Okay. But, yeah. Um, that's why I'm confused. Like, how do you guys want to do that? Cross examination. So cross examination. Oh snap. Oh snap. Uh, Hold on. That I, okay. No, I still got y'all up. Uh, but, it's, um, it's a cross examination. So, yeah, which is cool, but just just real quick, I just want to read this Bible verse real quick, Second Peter ten. Okay. But the day day of the Lord will come like a thief, <clears throat> in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be discovered. And then it tells you again uh, later in Second Peter, beautifully written, how 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 it told you that heaven and earth. Uh, you, you need to be looking for a signs of a new heaven and earth. And then it tells you again in Revelation twenty one. That's talking about when Jesus is coming back. 
So there's no, it's, it would be fine if you just admit there's no verse that says it. That'd be great, though. No, I just think you have a misunderstanding based on not having a canonical interpretation of the entirety of the message. The entirety of the message is about the symbolism of the temple being taken away and being destroyed. So you understand that when Paul talks about the uh, base elements, that's what Hebrews is talking about in the base elements of the administration of the temple. Circumcision, the showbread, all of those things are being taken away rolled up and destroyed in 70 AD. That's what the book of Revelation is about. Guess what? That's why Revelation says these things are soon to come to pass. He, you know, John wrote that to actual churches in Asia Minor. Do you understand that like some of those churches are still with us today? They still exist. They're Orthodox churches like at Ephesus, right? So John wrote a letter to a church in his day in Ephesus. I believe he's writing before 70 AD. And he says the things in the book of Revelation are soon to come to pass. And it describes a destruction of a city where Jesus was crucified. Uh, that's Jerusalem. That happened in 70 AD. So I want to go back to, in my cross-examination, the question of your uh, explanation as to why we're supposed to accept Matthew, because everything you say relies on, on in your argument here on Matthew. You said Papias and Irenaeus. Why am I supposed to care what Papias and Irenaeus said? How does that tell me it's inspired and authoritative? Uh I'm, I can answer that again, like I answered it before. You didn't uh, the answer. reason I brought it up, the reason I brought up Papias uh, and Iranius specifically is because how you admit it, and I've already said this, by the way, but you already conceded the point that Papias is the earliest um, so? earliest person to even talk about the Gospels. Is that so correct? How does early tell us that it's authoritative and supposed to be in the canon? That doesn't prove anything. Just assuming well, your no, point. Wait, wait, wait. He's the earliest I talked about it. And, and you, you're admitting that Papias is How does that, that tell me it's supposed to be in the canon of Scripture? You're admitting that Papia said that Matthew was originally hit, written in Hebrew and people interpreted so, it the best they could, correct? You're just stating facts about the book. I want to know how I'm supposed to know that that means it's in the canon and authoritative. So as I as I said previously when I brought it up the other time, the reason why that's important is not because he's claiming something is all authoritative or not. It's because if the way is read, and of course we have fragments, as I said before, we don't have the full excerpts, but because of that, we know that it was already viewed that way we before who? him. He's We who? You keep appealing to things that don't actually tell me the criteria. How do you know that's the right criteria? That that's what the right criteria. That, that what is the right criteria? For canonicity, for authoritative, for authoritative uh, reliance. Well, this th is not about the canon. This was before any canon. Well, I, I'm telling, I'm yeah, telling you is, that. Right. So, so I'm telling you that if Papias was the earliest person to talk about how do the I, gospel, how do we know that early makes it that? You just okay. keep assuming the argument. It's circular. No, you, it's you're early. not listening. You're not listening, and I and I don't know how no, to explain so you're not so understanding simple. what epistemic criteria is. I just want to know how you know that. What's the basis for that? You just keep saying, "Well, it's earlier." Wait, well, no, no. I said that Papias. You've you said this that Papias was the earliest person to talk about the Gospels. Correct? Uh, no, to talk about Matthew being the disciple of Jesus. <laughs> Who talked about the Gospels earlier than uh, Papias? It doesn't matter because none of these things tell me the criteria to know what makes. So why not? Why not just admit what you? Why not just admit what you've already admitted? I don't even. I don't even know why this conversation has to be this. Because difficult. you're avoiding an obvious question. I want to know no, how. No, I'm know. answering your question. No, you're not. You're, you're not relying even on. You're relying on Orthodox That's Church. Time. You're relying on Orthodox Church tradition. <laughs> uh, why so, do we care what uh, Papias says? I, I mean, I've I've answered that probably three times. No, now. You, you said it uh, earlier. That's not okay, an answer. Answer it again. No, my answer, and I'll actually go deep. You, you can like hold my two minutes for cross examination. I'll try to answer this question one more time for him. Um, the reason I brought Papius up, you asked me a question about why I brought him up, and I'm about to tell you again why I brought him up. You don't have to rehearse it. it. We all know what happened. You're just avoiding the question. You know what? Never mind. I don't care about it no more now. I tried to do it. It's okay. Well, Can we just, go to my two minutes again? You're just filibustering to burn out the time and not answering the question. Sure. Why we, is we that authoritative? Go to your two how, minutes, why is how, it authoritative? How, how can I burn out time if I purposely tell yeah. him to pause the time and don't but, start my but, time? How can I how can I burn we'll, it out? We'll go, to, we'll go to Bryson's two minutes for for his uh, cross exam, and then we'll go back to you, Jay. Sure. Thank you. And I, I'm just going to go back to the same thing. I reread Hebrews once to make sure I wasn't missing nothing, even though like I know the book of Hebrews and I knew I wasn't. Uh, literally, not, zilch, absolute this, zero. And Hebrew one even implies that heaven and earth has passed. So I will ask you again, and all I want is for you to admit the truth so we can have an honest conversation, an honest dialogue. Uh, can you admit that nowhere in the Bible does it say that heaven and earth has already passed? Can you at least admit that section? I, I, I'm not saying you, you can't believe that it has passed. I'm just saying, can you admit that nothing in the scripture says heaven and earth has already passed? It's 
Sorry, I was muted there. So Hebrews 1 says, heaven and earth will pass away. Your work will not pass away. They will perish. You will grow. They will grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will roll them up. So I just cited the passage that you said wasn't there. It is there. And I'm saying that it's about the destruction of the temple. Now you have a different interpretation. And I'm just simply pointing out your interpretation, number one, doesn't make any sense because you pitted Paul against Jesus. But you didn't tell me why I'm supposed to follow Matthew. Why is, a, is Matthew authoritative in your world? It's my time. It's my time. You can, you can re-ask your question again just like I re mine. mine. Um, that says heaven will pass. Like, bro, this is not like, I, I, you've been unnecessarily difficult. There no, is you're no just Bible verse that says- You're not aware of basic positions and exegesis bro, on no, the New Testament. What, what? Let me repeat myself again. Hey, I said what's, uh, when somebody's you on You said it wasn't text, even right? there. I cited you the text. It's no, there. It's Hebrews 1, but 10 I said, to 12. Listen, what I said is you can have your belief and your interpretation of something. I'm just asking, can you admit that nothing in the scripture says that heaven and earth has already passed? You That's just not how anybody scripture. interprets the Bible. Only heretics do that, where they think that literally a phrase has to be explicitly expelled out according to your I'm not heresy. saying that has to be your criteria. I'm just asking you, you to yes, admit it. Yes, you did. You said it's so admit, difficult to that's admit. That's what it. you said. Your argument is that it has to be explicitly there. Where where I'm, does the I'm, Bible? I'm asking you a question. Where does the Bible? Doesn't say it anywhere. It does say it. I just gave you the text where oh, it says heaven hey, and earth hey, will pass away. Hey, 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 bro, you can you can yield my two minutes. I don't even care. You're a hey, bro, sophist. You, 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 <laughs> right, well, you can literally is, yield the two, the two minutes. But okay. real quick, when when it's someone's two minutes on their time to uh, do the cross examination, they can let's make it so that they can interrupt and they can redirect. Um, and then it'll flip flop to where when the next person's time is going, they can interrupt and they can redirect. I'm just forgetting who's going. <laughs> that, that's that's all good. Um, it's it's you going now, Jay. Two minutes on the clock. Yeah. So I'm going to put my question again to you in a very simple way. You tell me on your view, why is the book of Matthew authoritative and inspired in your view, given that the way that we know that the only way we know that is via tradition that comes from the Orthodox Church. Well, I, I think you're having a preconceived notion right here, meaning I, I've never said anything about bad about tradition, so I find that weird that you brought it up. But uh, you just, just your you, question. You appeal to Papias. Okay. You appeal to Papias. <laughs> okay, just as I said, is Papias the reason I brought up... Did you, the not reason appeal, I brought, did you not appeal to the reason The reason I brought up Papias is because it proves that even before Papias, people already viewed the book of Matthew as So what? You don't understand inspired. that? That doesn't prove anything. It just proves that. It doesn't prove that it's authoritative and inspired, that people believed it. People believe false gospels are authoritative and inspired. Why don't we follow that's, that? that? That's part of Iranian's arguments that Correct. people were believing in false gospels. So Correct. I'm not disagreeing with that either. So how do we again, know? How do we know? I just said it. To no, him. you didn't. You're not. It's answering. because the earliest. Because you don't have an answer. It's because the earliest that we can go back in history that we can actually see with our own two eyes, churches were already using the gospel. How do we know that that's the right? You understand us begging the question. How do we know that that's the right criteria for canonicity? Because an old church did it. So no, we know because the God again that the gospels were already viewed as inspired. By That's begging the question. Every... We're asking the question of what the Gospels are, and you're citing the Gospels. That's a fallacy, Bryson. What is a fallacy again? Are, 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 you, are you adding something new to your question? Are you adding something new to your question? You don't, are you, you adding in? I, I have no, a feeling you're, like you are. You're you, citing Gospels you, about how we know what the Gospels are. That's a fallacy of circulation. That's not. I, I All right, that'll do be that. time, Bryson. It's your time for your. You just appeal to the Gospels, dude. I, no, I, I think you. I think you listen to respond. You don't actually listen. To what the other no, you just saying. don't have that, an answer. Your I find arguments it, I are find dumb. It, I, I no, find it's, it's, just, very... it's just bad arguments. Right, well, we're yeah. gonna go to, we'll go to Bryce's. There, you, it's two not understanding. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. So, um, again, now because I got two minutes, right? So I'm trying to make it quick. Uh, yes. because he could, he had no response from Matthew five seventeen to twenty one outside of saying that heaven and earth has already passed with no evidence of that, which I find fairly, fairly no the scriptural evidence of the for temple that. Was the evidence. Um. Yeah, but that's that's not what that's it's not what, not what you accept, means. But you but you don't know anything about. No, that. It's, it's, let's, I mean, let's, just, let's let Bryson ask his questions, and then yeah. when it's your time, you can interrupt Jay. Well, he's not Bryce asking questions; he's, okay, so, he's so, just rehearsing. So Revelation, yeah, for, yeah cross exam is, is leading to a question. By the way, Revelation twenty one tells you when heaven and earth will pass, and this involves Jesus coming back. So my next question is: Do you believe Jesus already came back? Yes, he came in judgment 
upon the nation of Israel in 70 AD, which is what he describes in Luke 21. Do you understand Luke 21 says that it will happen to this generation, that he will come in judgment with the Roman so, nation to destroy the temple? Okay, so now we get somewhere. So you believe that Christ has already came like a thief in the night. This, this, well, this if, is you our, had, if you had listened to instead of trying to talk so fast, I said that earlier. I, but I repeated what you said and, and wrote it all no, down. Just, and I literally all quoted, you do is rehearse. I literally quoted you. I literally no. quoted you saying heaven has already passed. I'm trying to... And, and I'm trying to get to the point yeah, of why you believe you, that. You don't so listen. Our, so our, just be quiet for a quick second. So I think our main issue is you believe that Christ has already came back like a thief in the night. And I, I think that is, I think that is partial actually, preterism, which you don't even know I think what that, that is. is. All right, bro. I, I honestly don't even care no more. I missed the conversation. <laughs> well, you, you have 30 seconds on the clock. I don't go. You can yield it, bro. I, ha I have. I, I don't even care. You can you can yield it. This is not this is not fruitful. Okay, I um I think the audience from the chat, the audience is finding it fruitful. We can go to Jay. Um, but I think a lot of people in the audience are interested in hearing your point of view, um, and Jay's point of view. I think they are finding it fruitful. Um, Jay, when whatever you want. Yeah, when you I asked you why the book of Matthew is supposed to be a gospel that we accept and that it's authoritative, you said because there was early mentions of gospels. That's begging the question. That's a fallacy. Yeah. So again. As I said, if you look at the earliest evidence we have of these things, which a lot of times do come from bishops, because Irenaeus uh, was a bishop right. and uh, Papias was also a bishop. Um, this is why I don't understand why you keep bringing up tradition. Like I've talked against that in this in this conversation, which I haven't. Uh, because of that, I know because of Papias that Matthew was already viewed so you do as appeal, inspired. You do appeal to prior tradition. to Papias. So you appeal to tradition, right? I I just said that. Okay, so the way that you know that that book is in the Bible is our tradition. You don't find that a problem for your view? No, because it was obviously viewed as inspired before Papias. That's that's the yeah, point. Yeah, but it's that's not viewed as inspired by anybody in your made-up group. <laughs> your group didn't exist. What? Where where what, what was group? your group in any of this time period? My group? Yeah. What, what, what group are you speaking of? Uh, whatever your group is. I don't know. So, I mean, how are you asking the question if you don't know about your group? Sect. Makes sense. Your sect, where was it in the first seven centuries? What, what, what would you call them out? Sect? My sect, if, I don't based know on what you, I believe. You, won't, you, you don't name it, so you tell me. Okay, well, based on what I believe, my sect is the people that, I don't know, um, follow Jesus in the okay. Bible. Were there any all, representatives of those people in the first, second, third, they, fourth, fifth, sixth they, centuries? I mean, they, they were all there. Matter where? of fact, it's the people that Do you you have think, any reference to prove that people in that time period yes, were in your view? Where? Yes. Can you name some? Paul. Paul kept Sabbath. No, no. Is that in the true second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. I'm talking about the originals. I, I want to know Sabbath. where's the church, your group. Did Paul keep centuries? Sabbath, sir? Okay, so it died. Do you think the church died? Did Paul keep Sabbath? Yes or no? I just want to know. How about Peter? How about James? Uh, I'm in, uh, this is me interrogating you. Oh, where's okay. your group? Well, in the, I, I, so I, there's not I, your group. I, in gave, the first, I, I gave you So it doesn't exist already. in the first seven centuries. No, if you actually do your research, people that were called Jews. I'm Christians asking have you existed. because you did the research on your I just, view. I just, I just, I, I've just now, answered I, your I want to know. You tell me where I they just are. Don't it. tell me to do the research in a debate. You're supposed I to just, bring the research. I just, I just answered. No, it. you I, didn't. I you said research. do the research. That'll be, time on, this. That'll be I, time on this, Bryson. You have two minutes for your cross examination of Jano. You can even give him my next two minutes. Uh, but uh, I already, I already answered your question. I you said didn't you actually do You haven't answered anything. You haven't answered. I did. I said you ain't answered shit, dude. So let me ask you a question. Where me, you said you said go look it up. Where is your group? Where's an example? This is why you need to talk less. And Where is more. the example? Okay, because if you actually quiet down for a bit, if you let me finish my statement, you would have heard You're me not, say you if you have said, done. You said go do some research. You said go do some research. Where was your group in those centuries? So pure silence, right? Oh, I don't even know why you asked the question because you don't even care if somebody answers it or not. You didn't answer. I don't, I don't let people not answer and just ramble. No, I did answer. You just no, you talked. Didn't. As you I was just answering. Machine, you talk, no, you you're trying to deflect answer. because you got pinned down. You want to make it into I, something I didn't about deflect. me I, not answering. I, I, clearly, I clearly answered your question. I you heard just talked so much that you didn't study. even hear it. I heard ghost And study. every time... That's not that's not the only thing I said. Okay. Where <laughs> was so, your group in those it's a simple question. It's just quit deflecting. Matter of fact, okay, matter of fact, I will use my I will use part of my two minutes when his two minutes is up uh to answer his question for him without him interrupting. Go ahead. Go ahead and Google your group in those centuries. Hurry up. 
We're waiting. Oh, I don't have the I don't have the Google Linda thing. Matter of fact, I had I haven't do I haven't had to look up. I have to pull book up the stuff. I, mean, I know all the stuff of my well, head. Yeah, you're an amazing genius at this. Is it, is it, we is all it know how smart you are, but you can't hey, answer basic questions hey, Chase, about your group. Is it my two minutes? It's, it's you gave up your last two minutes. You said Jay has thirty more seconds on this. Okay, and okay, then you'll cool. Your two minutes, and okay. you know we don't need it. Don't need to give give up time or anything. I'm pausing it right now, real quick. I know that things get contentious. That's totally fine. Um, these are serious things you guys are talking about. The audience is getting a lot from it. So I do think it's fruitful to engage as best as we can. And Jay, you have 20 more seconds left on your cross exam before we go back to Bryson. Where was anyone that believes your views in the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh centuries? They were always there from the Bible onward. That's not a source. That Dude, are you serious? Very Do serious. you really think that that was an answer? You have no evidence for it. You just said they're there. I have a lot of evidence that well, I will name give. Name one. Where's some sites? Where's some sources? Cite something. I will when your time is up. All right, that is that is time, um, Bryson. You have two minutes on the clock. Okay, can you pause me at my one minute mark? I'm I'm actually use a minute of mine to answer his question. Um. Okay. All right. So, like I said, like I said before, the reason I say if you do your research, you should have just stopped talking and let me finish what I was saying. My point of saying that if you do your research, they recall what people call nowadays Jewish Christians have always existed from biblical time onward. Uh, some people view them as Nazarenes, not the current Nazarenes, but they have literally always existed. A sect of followers of Jesus that kept the laws of Torah has literally always existed. Um, and the evidence is, like I said before, I mean, literally in the Bible, since every single apostle that existed uh, practiced exactly like how I do, which I find uh, quite funny. But even afterwards, this is a sad matter of fact, there's a lot of church fathers writings actually speaking against these people, calling them Judaizers. And you know that as a great history buff uh, yourself. So that was my answer, which means I did answer your question. If you don't like the answer, it's none of none of my problem. But I did answer it very clear for and this was my answer. But you was talking too much uh, now uh, for my question to you. I really don't have any more because you don't really um, care about honest answers. Uh, oh yeah so go after motives yeah because well, that's all you have left because you don't have an answer yeah so you you, no, you never quit you didn't answer yeah, you okay. just said they were there we have time to rebut jay um yeah we'll let, um, let bryson go for these two minutes you can re you can rebut in 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 uh, the debate's minutes. not about motives that is, that is true but let's let we'll let we'll leave the interruptions the only person who can interrupt is the person whose time it is yeah and we'll, we'll move forward that way well it's not uh, a but i okay, go I find it interesting how he's now crying about motives when he's made at least 10 claims about me in the last time, but I don't really care. I'm about to go tit for tat. That's not what a debate is supposed to be. We're our grown adults. Uh, so again, I mean, the only thing is he said Jesus already came in the deep in the night, and I guess that can be his interpretation. I can't tell him that can't be an interpretation. I think that is like a gross interpretation of what the scriptures have to say, and I would actually say he is in the minority on that, just like I'm in the minority amongst Christians of um of believing that uh we still have to keep the law um, I mean, I really don't have any more questions. I feel like that's the contention. I feel like we figured out what the issue is. Uh, he believes Jesus came like a beef in the night. I don't believe that has happened yet. So, I mean, I, I don't understand what else there will be to debate about. That's the crux of the issue right there. Okay. Well, if, if that's your time, we'll move over to Jay. Um, but the, where the debate has gone, it seems like is asking the question of how we know, uh, the interpretation is correct and things like that. And that seems to be what Jay is trying to press. Yeah. So, yeah, the the issue with that is that's not the debate at hand. That has just to do with the debate tonight. Oh, it has Even everything to do it, with the debate because the, the debate is about who who is keeping. I, the I, the I actually predicted that that would be his debate in my opening statement. So it doesn't oh, matter. It doesn't matter errors. that you predicted that. But but, that but has, he can. He that's can, not an argument. The, it's my time, dude. I, I know I was about to say, if you keep asking questions, I will keep answering. I don't even care about having any more time as I did. So just be grateful that I even gave you, you two extra minutes. Your bro. answer wasn't an answer. You just said they were there. That means you lost the debate, dude. Well, you, can't, you can't you can't give an actual you can't i'm glad you think it's funny because everybody in the audience is laughing at you too dog <laughs> you can pe mo most people are on your side because this is your youtube channel i don't really care nah, about the dude. audience says no nah, dude to be fair real quick guys dude, to be fair is, in, you're uh, it's just like the same it's just like it's just like you interacting with sam shamoon dude this uh, is like what, sam what, what, what'd you say too. chase hey, look, look, say, now, to be fair guys any in any debate i think the question of epistemology is going to end up being a crux issue because either side, both of you are making knowledge claims about why you believe what you believe. And I think it's an extremely pertinent question in, in any debate. And you don't so have any way to demonstrate that the, the church fathers that you just said that referred to Judaizers, you don't have any proof that they have the same beliefs as you, because you don't know what those Judaizers believed. 
You just said you, that they were there in all those centuries. No, what I claimed was they practiced what I practice. As a matter of fact, you're no, avoiding the main thing. I said no, they didn't because you just yes, made you they, have they no, kept, they didn't. They kept they you, kept. But, okay, no, bro. they didn't. You're making this is, you're just asserting that you can't demonstrate I'm not a, I'm, that. I'm not, an assertion. No. What is your it's, evidence it's, that in not, every one of those? It's not an assertion. What is bro, the evidence that this is not you, answering? Because okay. you can't answer. This answered is you, why you got to interrupt because you didn't. You didn't answer it. You just asserted I, I, it. I have. Do you know the difference I've between an assertion it. and I evidence? I said, if you do your research, yeah, so bro, now he's got to talk over me because he knows he can't answer this question. I'll be quiet heretic. for the rest of the time. You, I, I'll be quiet for the rest of the time. Know, yeah, yeah, just, just keep talking about, you. you're a filibusterer, dude. You're a sophist. You can't debate. You don't even know what a circular argument is. You said the gospel of Matthew is the gospel because it's early and it's cited by the gospels. Bryson, How can you this is, demonstrate this is time to, to cross-examine you? That's why he's that's minute. why he won't hush. How can you demonstrate that the people that you claim were your people in those centuries practiced all the things that you practice? You can't demonstrate that. I can again you just misrepresented what I said in the beginning, which you typically do because you don't listen, you talk too much. Um, secondly, I've already told you that's why I said you have to do your research. Because if I make claims, your answer you just wasn't claim an answer, you just asserted it. So you don't have evidence to back up the assertion. You said they just were there. They believe what I believe. I, I have go, an ample amount. Of, I have an ample amount of evidence, and I like how uh, you maybe much in a debate that. you would bring the evidence. It might be a good idea to bring evidence to a debate instead of asserting it. You ever think about that? Well, you've already conceded to my point to be true. Down, I didn't, didn't concede you? anything. Yes, you did. <laughs> no, you I admitted didn't. that the church. You admitted that a lot of early church fathers talked about Judaizers, didn't you? That doesn't mean they believe what you believe. You're just asserting. What it. is a Judy? What do the church fathers say Judaizers is? You think there's only one group of Judaizers? And don't lie either. You think there's don't one? Lie. Good, don't accuse me of lying. I just, I, I just I asked you. You minutes. just got bodied. That and that's called? why you're so mad. What that's is a Judy? Because because hey, you, you you claim Bryce, I have. Bryson's no. got his two minutes on the on, on the on the clock for him to cross examine you now, Jay. Thank you. So the difference between me and you, you just claim somebody was mad. The only person mad here is clearly you. That is it. You're the only person mad in a heated way. I'm not mad. You. No, you're debating a very immature way, which Wait, is okay. This tip, this is that's called rhetoric. This is typical. That's be quiet. Called, this is, be quiet. You know be quiet. Let's, be let's quiet. Use, use his time. It, there be is quiet. rhetoric on both sides. Um, let's. Well, Bryce and I pause the clock. We'll let okay. Br Bryson can talk. It should be directed, ending up in some kind of point, critique, or question to Jay. Um, but you have two it minutes. Will be. Bryson. There you go. It will be. So since he conceded that early church fathers, uh, which is why I like using evidence that he has to concede to. Talking about Judaizers, I want him to explain to me what was the reason that church fathers called uh, the this group of people Ju Judaizers. Please answer that question. That's a term used for a lot of groups. Why did the church fathers call a certain group of people Judaizers? Give me the why. I didn't ask you who they called. I said, because give me the why. Because they taught the necessity of the Jewish law to be saved, which is the heresy that you repeat. That doesn't tell me that in every one of those centuries, those groups taught everything that you taught. So you're just assuming. So, how do you so demonstrate? I, 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 so, 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 how do you so, demonstrate they have wait, all the beliefs? Wait, 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 wait. Pause. Pause. Questions right now. So you understand? I just want to make it clear. The okay. reason, well, the re the reason he just started over talking people in the chat because he just conceded that I was a hundred percent correct. No, in I what didn't I was concede saying. it. You just and missed he, the yes, point. Yes, you did. Dude, yes, you did. Because you didn't I didn't listen keep it to the point. Hey, I said you need to demonstrate. You need to demonstrate. Listen, Judaizing isn't one group. Do you think it was one group? Bro, my belief system is to keep the commandments. You just admitted that the church fathers have always talked about a sect of people that they you, call dude, heretics. You're so dumb. You don't even know that they talk be quiet, about. Be they quiet, talk about my time. dozens of groups. Be quiet, it is they my talk time. about be dozens of groups. Quiet. I, did pause, I did pause the clock. To to be fair, when um when when rhetoric is is thrown at someone, they I think it's fair that if it's the other person's time and they're throwing rhetoric at them, that they can respond. But Bryson, you have the rest of the time to ask your questions or perform your critiques. Thank you. So I do find an interest. This is the last thing I'm going to say. Hopefully he doesn't interrupt me before I finish. The reason he has to interrupt is because I said that people believe what I believe. He said, we don't know that. So I pressed him on what a Judaizer was. And he just admitted that a Judaizer, according to the church fathers, was somebody that thinks the, the law was a necessity, which is quite clear that he knows what I believe, which I texted him as my belief system. So he just admitted that my group of people have always existed, which is why he's now about to deflect and say, well, different types of Judaizers because he has officially objectively speaking lost this point no I, didn't. I I specifically said that your claim was in every one of those centuries your group was represented you then made your group so broad as to be anybody that's a quote Judaizer but that term is used for even groups like the Nestorians you're not a Nestorian 
So that's a broad term. I don't know why you're dancing over there because you just got bodied. <laughs> that's a broad term that doesn't prove anything. You just assumed your point. You know, in, in every, how do you know that in every one of those centuries, they held to the beliefs that you have as a body of beliefs? Because my belief system is simply to keep the commandments. I never said every aspect no, that's of my not, belief. That's just not like, true. That's just not like, true. Just, just, that's not just true. Like the, that's not just your belief system. This you you have a lot more. You have a whole end times philosophy appended to your belief Just system. like how early church fathers disagree with later church, church fathers, which is why. That doesn't Orthodox, prove that your group existed in those centuries. So you just got caught this, in a, you made it I so didn't broad. Get, I didn't get caught anything. You did. You this made debate, it so broad that debate, it, could be, this, it could be any group debate, called that. That's you, a, said, you, you said Ju yourself, Judaizer is a general term, right? You it's said used, but it's used for any group. And I said that it was, I'll, I'll just respond. I know. I said that it's groups that believe that the Mosaic law had to be kept. Do you understand that amongst those groups, there's dozens of groups because it's not one group. That's the, your assumption that it's just one group. It's not. That's why my question to you was your group in all those centuries, your group, isn't just the belief of keep the Mosaic law. You got other beliefs, don't you? Like anti-Trinitarian, right? So are you only united to the anti-Trinitarian Judaizers? Yeah, so he's not going to answer. All right, I pause the time. Um, I don't. I don't. Um, I don't think it's fair to to either of your time to um, just just be silent when being asked the question. Cross examination. Yeah, he's not going to answer when. So he does this game because now, he doesn't. If you can give me one time, if you can give me one time, he has allowed me to fully answer a question. No, I will this yield is, to you that dude, I shouldn't be silent. Here's, here's the full thing, real quick. It. Real quick, both both of you guys have done. Um, Plenty of interrupting. It is a debate, obviously. Oh, that's not true. I did not. Nah, 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 oh, come it's on. It's becoming cap. I'm about, to, I'm about to get it, off. You interrupted. No, if if y'all are going to be disingenuous, then I don't really care. No, you're disingenuous. Every, dude. What are you every talking about? Single, I don't think anyone's trying to be disingenuous. You're a sophist. You are. I have not interrupted guys, him. Like, like hey, yes, he's interrupting yes, me. You know that isn't true at all. Please You have interrupted. I mute. I mute my mic when this man because asks my you, question. That, no, that's just, your excuse the same, to not answer. The same, the same, the because same you respect, don't have an answer, you mute your mic. Guys, guys, stop. We're, wait, let's stop. One second. One second. When it's when it's your time, you you can interrupt. It's Jay's time right now. He can interrupt, and then that's called the cross examination. Before, real, real How quick. can I answer a question if he interrupts? Explain it to me. In the you mean like process. when you mute it and don't answer it, dude? That's you just gave every up. Every time, every you gave I'm up. Counting, it's a party I cross interrogated you. You no, got that's quiet. Not, first off, I watch a million professional debates and cross examination. I don't care how many you have. You didn't answer. Them, you got quiet. They allowed that the person matter. to fully answer the question. No, you didn't. Before they respond. No, you didn't. That's yeah, not you, every you time got quiet. I didn't answer you, the question. Hey, this is your deflection because you can't answer this, it. This isn't a deflection. You have to do this. Every one of your questions. You have to do this. Guys, you just talk too much. You didn't answer. Down. It's starting to get. It's it's starting to you get to, to the point uh, just right that right now where the debate's not moving forward because we're arguing about the debate itself. That, that's um, his tactic. Just let let me moderate <laughs> the debate, okay? Let me moderate the debate. That's a nice when fake laugh. Person's time on cross exam. I do got a fake. Look at his fake laugh. Fake. <laughs> Hey, bro, dude, it's all talk of you, you're, you're just a typical person. Dude, you got quiet. Debater. That's why you don't. I ever, asked you a question and you sat there quiet Every because you're shook. Oh, oh, so, you so, got so, so, quiet because oh, you're wait, shook. Wait. Hey, Jay Dyer, Jay Dyer, genuine question. Do you honestly, like, I just want to know if you're just lying for no reason for your audience. Do you genuinely believe That's I'm all you my got. Mic? That's all you got hey, because you can't, listen, you can't prove you your dumb heresy from hey, you, hey, Jay, your, Jay, your heretical group don't exist. It Jay, just calm exist. down and just let me talk for four seconds. No, because you're, you, you're just, all you want to do is talk about lying. Everybody, do in the you actually, dude, you do embarrassed you, yourself, bro. Bro, Jay, do you actually believe that the reason I'm muting my mic is because I don't have an answer for your question? Yeah, is that what you genuinely believe? Absolutely. So, all right. can I, you can, can make I, can faces I, all you want, dude. That's not, gonna, that's not going to do yeah. anything. And you can get upset. But the real I, issue here is that, bro, I, Jay, difference between me and you is I mean, you're the only person upset. You over there fake laughing, dude. to me. Oh, I'm glad it's a joke. Are using right. rhetoric. Rhetor rhetoric is fine. Let's keep it about the actual points, not meta. Look, uh, if it's a joke to you, why can't you answer that question? Debate. I've answered every question you've had so far. Everyone. Uh, no, you didn't. You understand Which just asserting things isn't an answer. Yeah, and every time I try to explain to you how it wasn't just in certain things, uh, you got upset and continued interrupting. Are you united to Judy so Judaizing groups in the 5th, 6th, 7th century that were, say, Trinitarian? Is it, is it my time yet? 
Yeah, so he don't want to answer. So the this is what. Yeah, so now, so he's not going to talk. The time was paused. So and I, I want everybody to see that he won't answer okay. the specific question. No, I, no, I, no I, I will answer your question for the first minute of mine without you interrupting. Yeah. No, 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 that's not that's not how that's not how it works. So how cross examination works, how it remains fair, is that the person whose time it is, when it's your time, Bryson, you can interrupt as much as as much as you'd like to keep the question focused. Jay has thirty seconds left. If Jay goes silent that's not fair to your time it's not fair to his time if you go silent when he's asking questions as well so he only has 20 seconds left on his time let's keep it focused on the topics and not about uh yeah either I side think, either side talking about the debate itself let's keep it focused yeah, on the topic i think, when, mm -hmm. I, think need, I think y'all need to watch a few cross examinations and professional debates but it's okay um, well, you're not so, a professional debater what are so you, you talking about so jay, jay jay has 20 more it's seconds my left time, time and this is what you I, I, I was about why to answer you, your why question are you so worried about my time and i was about to answer your question for your time i'm literally about to answer your question again for the 50th no, time i'm gonna ask the question oh again okay shoot. correct are you united to the trinitarian groups say in fourth fifth sixth and seventh centuries that were judaizers do you have the same faith as those people because you're an anti-trinitarian you're claiming that all of those groups are your group is that true so just to be clear he called me anti-trinitarian which i told him i wasn't in text messages so i don't even know why he's using that right now uh, but just to be clear anybody that teaches to keep the commandments which is why if you actually look up messianic churches of today the they're mixed with people that believe in trinitarian oneness and right. other people so anybody that preaches that follows jesus and pre teaches people to keep the commandments i don't care about your other the a lot uh theology but if you uh, believe in Jesus and teach people to keep the commandments, you are my group. So when church fathers talked about Judaizers, they were talking about people that believe in Jesus. And as you've already said, people, you've already admitted this, they're talking about people that believe in Jesus and also try to Judaize Christianity, which is teaching to keep the commandments. So yes, if they do that, they are part of my group. You admitted you didn't even know who my group was, which is why you wanted me to explain it. No, you didn't want to say your group. You didn't want to say your group because you, you don't want to alienate Christians because you're passing yourself off as a Christian when you're not. Bryson, you have two minutes on the clock. You can feel free to um, interrupt during your cross examination time. That is, that's no. your time. You can feel free to, you know, use no, it okay. however you want. It's okay. I'm an adult. Um, so I will actually piggyback off your question because I really don't have no answer questions. I feel like we already figured out the issue with this conversation. Um, but so since you've already admitted, and I've already told you who my group was, and I just laid it out to you again, my question to you is when they say a Judaizer, if they are referring to people that follow Jesus and teach people to keep the commandments, and I say that's my group, that's my group. So was I right when I said my group has always been in existence? According yeah, that's to your disingenuous time? because you can make the parameters as wide as you want to be any group that fits in so that you can then have an example in every one of those centuries when you know very well that those groups are all divided against one another and there's not a consistent lineage in every century of a succession that's my point we have apostolic succession there's one church in all those centuries it's the church that yeah you, so it's the church that you got the gospel of matthew from right <laughs> yeah so that's irrelevant so that's no, it's not irrelevant, irrelevant because jesus said that yeah, the it's kingdom bryson's time. it's bryson's time go ahead bryson i, I haven't so asked the question yet is it no, his no, time? you don't ask questions it's not your time okay so the reason i just said that was irrelevant to what i said is i just told you my group so unless you're claiming that I'm lying about my group, by the way, this is the group I've been saying I'm a part of. You can't find me saying That's otherwise. It's a word concept you, fallacy is what so I'm you saying. Try, so it's a word no, concept. No, you're, try, you're trying to claim it's too general. The reason you don't want it to be too general because you have to admit you're wrong. And I, and I understand, bro. No, it's, it's a fallacy. It's but disingenuous. I just, you, I, just told you, I just told you my group. You've already admitted what Judaizers were according to according to the church fathers. So if if And you're not in continuity with then. those groups. Let me ask you. You're, let just, me ask you're this, doing a word concept let me ask fallacy. You, let me ask you. Let me ask you this way then. Let me ask you this way then. If... You have to accept what I just claimed my group was. I don't care how general you think it is. Based on that, your that argument is based to... on how general it is. Man, you Aaron, can't even Bryson's make an argument, time. dude. Jay, it's Bryson's time. Bryson, go ahead. Does that mean, if you have to accept what I just said, does that mean according to you and what you have already claimed, you have conceded the point that my group, that you already claimed you didn't know who it was, you, you have to claim, is it true that this has already always existed according to church fathers? No, your argument is based on a word concept fallacy. That you can identify in every century. Answer the question. I am going to interrupt you this time. I don't, I don't want a, to. It's a answer. flawed is it argument. Yes or no? It's a flawed I don't argument. How general it is. Based on what I, I just said, no matter how general so it is. So you don't care if according it's a to church fathers has this has this group always existed. Do you know what a word concept fallacy is? Has the group always? Don't ask me questions to your time is up to your tears. Your time has this group always existed. Your argument is based on a word concept fallacy. Right. So I reject you the, the rest argument. of my time.
All right. So that, that was that was a little over. It is fair to go um, to unpack a question on either side. If either of you feels a question is flawed, Bryson, if you feel a question he asks is flawed and he asks for a yes or no, feel free to say this is not a yes or no answer. Um, Jay, you have two minutes on the clock for your time for cross-examination. Yeah, the argument is based on a word concept fallacy that the term Judaizer can be extended to be so broad that it encompasses any potential group that has a very basic general belief that he shares. And so, as I pointed out in the early church, the word Judaizer is used across the board for Arians, for Nestorians, for anybody that's an anti-Trinitarian. And my point about the Trinity was not to deflect to the Trinity, but to point out that your group doesn't exist in continuity. You know the argument I'm making. You're coming up with ways that there's so broad a description of heterodox people that, oh yeah, well, I'm, it'd be like me saying, I agree with the heretics and there's heretics in every century. So my church as a, of the heretics existed in every century. See, I got gotcha. you. That's called a word concept fallacy because you know that you don't have is there, is there continuity with those, with those groups. No, I'm having to explain why your argument is a fallacy. Which also, not, no question. Okay. No, hey, it's Jay's time right now. Let's let I Jay don't in. have to ask you a question. I can explain the argument to you, which you don't understand. Then I can ask you a question. How do you have a continuity with those groups that don't believe what you believe when it comes to things like the Trinity? As I've already explained to you last time, and as you've already conceded to, um, the word Judaizer, as you've already said, this is according to your criteria, has to include people that are that follow Christ and claim oh. that the Mosaic law is, right. is necessary, so it has to, which, right. is, which is different, so which is broad. different. So you admit which my is point. different. It's naturally broad, which is different. Oh, from, thank you. So your argument rested on a broad definition, which is why I was trying no, to say. No, that's, that, that's, that's what just you just true, said. You just conceded. No, no, that. that's truly my group. So I don't that, care if you that accept that doesn't it or not. exist as an actual body of people. You see, it's not an organization. That's my point. No, it, Jesus it is, said. Who, who said it has to be? That's my argument, dude. That Jesus said that the church would not have the gates of hell prevail against it in Matthew 16. So you have a thousand different sects over seven centuries that don't actually have a, con a continuous belief other than one thing in common. That's yeah, a, I don't that's a care about that because you, you are still, yeah. you are now fully conceding your point. No, I'm pointing out that your sophistry is a dumb fallacy. It's a word concept fallacy. It's just, a, it's, I just right, gave you an example of why it doesn't work. It's two minutes now. <laughs> and I can, because I just want to point out that before you said we had to ask a you question. You don't know what a word concept felt like. When I tried to explain something beforehand. So, uh, you don't I, know I what the, clear, you don't know I just want to be clear. It's okay to, for either of you to explain the argument that you're okay, making. Okay, cool. But th Great. Th like, that's, to that's totally fine. Well, he's um, a debate pro, so he knows about cross-examination. He's a debate pro. Yeah, yeah, of course. Here, you got two minutes on the clock. Sorry to interrupt, Bryson. Okay, so for my time, I have to just explain to you, and I hope that I could do it as simple as possible. Um, I just want to just recap this one more time. This will be the last time I recap it. You just don't like how broad it is. I told you before, you asked me specifically, are people that believe in the Trinity but teach people to keep the law? Are they are part of my group, and I told you yes. So unless you just flat out tell me I'm lying, everything else you said is null and void and irrelevant. I told you who my group was. I've been telling you who my group was. And then I gave you, I'm the one who brought up how church fathers talked about Judaizers all throughout. And you said, has your group existed? Where's evidence for your group? I then gave you evidence for, for my group. And then you claim, oh, that's too broad to no, be a group. Yeah, right. So my, my group, my group, it's my time. My group is just broad. So it's people that teach <laughs> and keep the commandments. So you could, yeah. I'm going to just say, hey, I'm explaining to you my group. Let, let him keep going. I'm explaining to you my group for the last time. My group of people, I don't care if you believe in Trinity, oneness. This is my fourth time saying this, by the way. Trinity, oneness, whatever it is. If you teach, if you keep commandments and teach people to keep the commandments, as Jesus stated in Matthew 5, you are a part of my group. It doesn't need to be called a, a name or, or, ha, or have a group for that to be my group, the people I view as my brothers in Christ. Um, and you've already conceded that the church father talked about these people all always since the beginning, which is conceded that my group has always existed and always been talked about. That is just the basic objective truth of the matter. Okay, and you do have 30 seconds left if you have anything else, any questions you want to direct to Jay. Um, I mean, all he's gonna do is try to twist the turn it again as he's been doing. Um I don't really I don't really have no extra questions. Yeah, the argument was that there's a visible body of people known as the church, the kingdom, that is one Lord, one faith, one body, according to Paul. That means it can't be split amongst a thousand different sects. So for you to maintain your argument, you did exactly what I said. You had to make it so broad that it includes any possible person with one belief.
and you don't care about all of the other multitude of beliefs that they're all divided amongst themselves about. So that means that you don't actually have a continuous group. That was the argument from Matthew 16. So in your view, the true church of the remnant or whoever you think it is, is all of these thousands of sects all divided against one another. So did Satan prevail against your church to divide it into thousands of different sects amongst these seven centuries? No, Satan only uh, prevailed against like the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church, which is why y'all don't keep the commandments. You didn't answer my question. So how is how did I say I said no, which no, is a direct didn't. answer. No, you, that was a two quote another fallacy. Do you know what a two quote fallacy is? You just you, you, you just know what happened, bro. You know I what answered the question already. You, you I said did it. No. You said you put and it back. And by on the way, you, you said put it one back. More. That's a two quote fallacy to put it back on me that the Catholic Church and Orthodox Church were the ones that capitulated Satan. When I asked you a specific question about your schismed and divided groups throughout those centuries, you didn't mm -hmm. answer. You said no, it's the Orthodox Church. Yeah, I said no, which is the answer. That's correct. a two quote No, it's not. You know what? If, you don't even oh. know. You don't. Why are you debating? You don't know three basic fallacies you've already committed. Two quote quote, bro. You're just doing what all everybody do. Like they just throw oh, you out mean there citing logical upset. fallacies, uh, which you one, don't want to go one to. One body, one one uh, Lord, one faith, one body. You don't even have that. That's why the schism happened. No, we happened. do. The so Orthodox that Church prevailed against it's everybody. Same. Also, that's a two quote way. You're just saying you don't have that. You don't have that. You don't. Yes, we do have that. But that's. Well, a I've already said no to the first question. So all you're gonna do is say, oh, so what's the? So I don't really care to respond to you that. You said no. So you're go. not gonna respond to it because you can't respond. I did. I said no. That's not an answer. Just no, dude. You just that's lost. literally by definition. You just an answer, lost. Sir. You just lost, bro. No, you just you, you just said no. That's, that's, I that's asked you a question that. and you said no. What's the argument mm -hmm. for that being the case? That's time on that, Bryson. You have two minutes on the clock for your cross Thank you. Uh And I and I will explain it to him. So the reason it didn't prevail against the people that I believe um, are truly like fully in Christ, the people that teach and keep the commandments is because we know biblically that those are the people that Satan will wage war with. Uh, didn't say Satan will wage war with a church at all. Um, doesn't say that in the book of Daniel. doesn't say that in Matthew 24. doesn't say that in really, really any pro it's, it's Bryson's time. Yeah. Um, uh, but what, what the Bible does say in revelation 12 is that saying is wage war against those that Keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus Christ. The pro I think the issue you're having is you, you're just so used to having like an official body. It has to be called a name when it doesn't biblically, which is why I'm just 100 percent correct. If you keep the commandments and the testimony of God, that is the body. Those are the people Satan are waging, waging war waging war against, which is why I said no. Because in Daniel 7, it talks about how Satan works. It says people will be arrogant and attempt to change the times and the law of the Most High. And the reason I brought up the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church is because objectively speaking, um, that is something that has happened, which you have tried to defend this entire of uh, this debate. So no, Satan has not prevailed against who I believe to be the body, uh, because we still keep the commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus Christ. And you still have 40 seconds on the clock, Bryson. Oh, um, oh, I guess my question would be, does that properly answer your question, uh, Jay? I mean, you said no, but it, it's not, it, it's a nonsensical answer because you just said, no, they, they're the true church. They're the true people. Well, you asked, has Satan, <laughs> hey, friend, it's you, a very, it's a very time. simple question. You, you, you already, I answered, I, I thought I answered it so beautifully, bro. You just, you, no, you just restated your position. No. Again, you, right, Jay, you, you have two minutes on the clock for your cross-examination. Yeah, so you restated your argument about what you think is the case in church history. And you said, we know that there's always these people because the Bible says so. No, I want to know in those centuries. Yes, you did. You said that the that it would be warred against the people that keep the commandments. And by the way, Revelation 12 is about the church. It's the group of people that come from the, the woman, the queen of heaven in that text that gave birth to the Messiah, that queen of heaven is Mary. Mary is the Theotokos. So that chapter is about the church. So yeah, absolutely. The church is called the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew 16, the passage that I'm referring to, Jesus said the gates of hell would not prevail against the kingdom and that he would give the keys to the apostles. He gives the keys to Peter. He gives the keys to the rest of the apostles in Matthew 18, two chapters later. And I'm saying that that means that there's one Lord, one faith, one body as a visible organization in history. The one that you get the gospel of Matthew from that you admit you appeal to our tradition to get that same visible body is the church of history. That church is unified. It teaches the same things throughout the seven ecumenical councils. And I asked you for the unity of your group as a visible organization throughout those centuries. And you said it's not a visible organization. It doesn't have to be. 
it can be a bunch of different groups. Okay, so Satan did prevail to split your church into anti-Trinitarian and Trinitarian groups? Dude, that makes no sense. Oh, um, it, can I respond? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you just very incorrect. Uh, the, the Bible never says the body has to agree with one uh, theology, but it does say, and by the way, your church is definitely what? not the body it talked about that. in Revelation. It actually does in, in, say that. In Revelation 12. And I'm going to tell you why. Because that body has to hold to the commandments and the testimony of Jesus Christ, which your body don't do. Um, you don't believe so the deity I, of Christ. You don't have the testimony of Christ. <laughs> All right, Bryson, it'll be your two minutes on the clock for your time for cross-examination. We have about 15 minutes left for um, cross-examination, or 16 minutes okay, left for cross-examination. Um, so, so I think I'm starting to see the, the issue here. Um, he believes you have to agree with the same exact theology to be part of the body, which leads to what he said before. Now yeah. it's starting to make sense. Uh, that's just very in error. There's nothing to back that up. No scripture. Matter of fact, uh, for a, a large part of early Orthodox history and Catholic history, there was many uh, belief systems, which is why they had councils and bishops had to vote on different belief systems and see which one was right. Matter of fact, Claiming the Trinity was necessity to be a Christian, that was way later um, in church history when that was a when that was a thing to be said. That's why so many church fathers wrote so many books trying to explain the Trinity and debate against other people that was a supposedly of the same faith. Um, so, but biblically speaking, it's just not necessary. Trinity one, it's not that it's necess necessary uh, to be a Christian. He talked about deity of the Christ. Deity means divine. Claiming that I don't believe Jesus is divine. It's just, I mean, flat out. False, but like I said, I'm not about to go into that silly argument no, again. It's not false. You're uh, anti trinitarian it's, it's, don't, don't. it's Bryson's time. Bryson, feel free to go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, so it's all right. You'll have your time to to call that out if if that's if that's how you feel. Bryson, go ahead. You have about um a little over a minute. Okay. Uh deity means uh deity means divine, divine means from God or of God or God. I believe that Jesus is clearly from God. Uh and I refer to Jesus as Lord, by the way. So not being disingenuous, you just don't know what you're talking about. Um, so as I said, your body can't be the body spoken about in the Bible because you have spent uh, almost two hours saying you don't have to keep the commandments. So I know for a fact the body that I said is the body is the true body and not yours. All right, Jay, you have two minutes on the clock. Yeah, first of all, that's not what divinity means. It does not mean from God. It's a generic term that can be, well, I don't know where you're shaking your head. Literally, that's not what it means. I mean, humans are from God. Does that mean we're divine? You don't even know what the words mean. The word God is a general term that can be used in scripture to refer to angels, to devils. It can be used to, re to refer to human beings, and it can be used to refer to God himself. So it's a general term that can be used in different ways. But to pass yourself off as a Christian, when you know good and well, you do not believe the fundamental doctrines of Christianity, which are defined by things like the Council of Nicaea, it would be like me saying, well, I'm a member of the Communist Party, but I don't believe what uh, the Communist Party teaches. Oh, I'm a member of, uh, uh, you know, pick any group that has a set defined group of characteristics and to then say, well, but I don't actually believe those things, but I am that thing. You don't have the right to just use those terms or to appropriate those, pr appropriate those things to yourself, just like there's not a unified Judaizing group. So, you don't believe in the Trinity, and if you believe Jesus is a creature, then you're not, you don't believe in the deity of Christ in the sense of the way the church has always taught it. And it's not true that the Trinity is a late doctrine. Where do you think, where, where do you think the Trinity came from? Uh, which version of the Trinity? There's only one version the in the first thousand years of Christianity. Well, the original one was uh, Tertullian. Then there's a guy that people claim that no, talked about it before true. Tertullian. Yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. You think Tertullian made up the Trinity? Um, he was the first person that coined the term Trinitas for an absolute fact. Uh, th and then that, the guy that, that doesn't mean that he, gonna... yeah, that doesn't mean that he's the person that made up the doctrine. Yeah, so I can interrupt gonna... in cross examination, so I don't know why you're shaking your head. It's a cross examination. That means I can interrupt. Oh, I, he's already established you can. So I'm going off your rules, but I'm still making faces because you have a conversation. You have conversations like a child. Uh, if I'm being quite no, frank, it's called with a you. it's called a cross examination. Uh, yeah, I watched a lot of those, and this is not how they typically go, well, especially let's, for let's get, back, let's get back to the debate. But I don't so, want to argue about so, the debate so, again. Where do, so you just, think, just, where, yeah. where do you think the Trinity and the deed of Christ came from if you think it's late? I want to know. You think, well, I didn't say the deity. I didn't say the deity of Christ. That's why you're trying to move the goalpost. No, uh, the Tertullian same. is the first they person. Go Tertullian, the two doctrines go together. No, because that Absolutely. means you have to. 
That means you have to say one is doctrine is the same thing, which Tertullian wrote books about against Praxeus, yeah. arguing against one is doctrine. Both sides believe that Jesus is a deity. And by the way, you need to go look up the definition of divine. You're objectively wrong for like the 50th time in this debate. No, but I just think told you right that the word thing. God is a generic term. And you gave it. Um, you gave it one definition. You said, I said divine. You said divine. Yeah, God and deity and divine are all the same reference, and they refer to generic terms. Yeah. We'll, we'll move to Bryson's two minutes for cross examination. Okay, thank you. So he claimed that divine does not mean from God, and anybody like I, like if I'm not mistaken, you just Google it. I, I don't think no definition oh, really? of divine Google. wouldn't have that in there. Google. So um, he claimed that that wasn't a definition. So he's not going to even admit he's objectively wrong about that because he has a hard time. Um. I meant that period. It, uh, sec secondly, that's what I was saying about uh, Tertullian. Tertullian's most popular writings are called Against Praxeus, and which essentially is him debating uh, Praxeus on it's just his writing, so it's, there's no um, counter to, counter arguments. But it's him debating Praxeus on the one is doctrine. And if anybody doesn't know what one is doctrine is, is they believe the it's sort of what a Zerka tried to imply, even though he claims he believes in the Trinity, um, is the Son. The Holy Spirit and the Father are all Jesus, meaning Jesus is the Father. There is no separation. There is no distinction. Uh, but they also believe Jesus is a deity, obviously, because they, they believe Jesus is the Father. Um, so when he claims the deity of Christ and the Trinity is connected, no, it's not. They're clearly two separate things. That's just an objective truth. And Trinitas, as I said, uh, started with Tertullian. There was one guy beforehand, but that wasn't a Trinity. That was more like a quadruply or whatever the quite terminology of that is. Uh, but as far as the as far as the most popular version of the Trinity doctrine or the term Trinidad, that definitely came from Tertullian for an objective fact. And then it evolved from there because that's not even the same Trinity that I don't know if Orthodox believe in that same Trinity. But the the trend, the most popular trends are not even the same as it was during that time. And you have 30 seconds left. Oh, dang. Um, I got to start talking slower or something that felt like forever. Um. I will just repeat what I said. Uh, your your church is not the body of scripture, like I said before, because they don't keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I just want to continue to rub, uh, not rub it in, but continue slamming at home. All right, Jay, you got two minutes on the clock. We have about 10 minutes left in the cross exam. Yeah, I asked you uh, not whether he used the term. I said, where do you think the doctrine of the Trinity comes from? And you gave me a long explanation about him talking uh, about Praxius, I'm, I'm aware of all that, but I asked you about where you think the doctrine of the Trinity comes from, and you just said the coining of the term. So you, you think that the term is itself the origin of the doctrine, and you think that the Trinity doesn't uh, directly relate to the history of the divinity of Christ at Nicaea? No, because the Council of Nicaea was not the Trinity. Matter of fact, the Holy Spirit had nothing to do with the Council of Nicaea. It wasn't even talked about um, when it came to uh, the deity Athanasius of Christ. Athanasius has an entire book on that, so you're, you're wrong. And he's the, the father. Oh, wait, so the Council of Athanasia. Nicaea. Yeah. Wait, wait, sir. It's called the, the Trinity. It's your, it's your so time. You don't I'm sorry. Know, it's your time. It's, you, so you're not aware of the basics of the Council of Nicaea. You don't even think that the the guys who are the champions of it, who wrote extensively about the Holy Spirit, you don't think that, that Nicaea talks about the Holy Spirit? <laughs> and the Council of Nicaea was the Holy Spirit, a part of the Godhead. After they had they vote yes or no, it's a simple question. Don't Absolutely. try to run around the questions. Yes, it's, Jay's, it's Jay's time. He has oh, you right, you right, you right. My bad, my bad. That's my apologies. All good. No, absolutely, because uh, I have the writings of Athanasius up there, and he, he writes extensively about the Holy Spirit as well. I didn't ask. Never mind. I mean, you, you got to ask me. I mean, you understand he's the he is the father of the of Nicaea, right? So I'm just trying to figure out where you think the doctrine of Trinity came from, because because you're not aware of the basics already. Um, your claim, you're trying to claim the person that wrote about it means it was in the Council of Nicaea. You know that's that, that's just disingenuous objectively. You're, the no, Council you're of lying. Nicaea, I can, you can go to the Council. Agree. No, that's not true. It's, a, I, I it's factually false. Is. I know the Council. No, you don't. Okay, so I need you to no, show you don't. me. You're okay. saying that they don't talk about the Holy Spirit, that Athanasius doesn't write about the Holy Spirit. The what father I, of Nicaea. Obviously, what I mean by that is the Holy Spirit was not seen as part of the Godhead until yes, he a is. later council. Athanasius defends the Trinity. So you you again. I'm not totally talking about him. I'm talking about the exact he is, council. He is the father of the council. His writings are given the stamp of approval. That's his council. <laughs> you, keep, you keep trying to twist the argument. You're doing no, it so slickly. You I don't, love because it. You don't I love know, it, Jay. You I don't know do. basic facts on this stuff. You're trying to argue okay. something you don't know about. And you're embarrassing All right, that's yourself. Tyson, you'll have two minutes on the clock now for your cross-examination. We'll only have about eight minutes left. Is my two minutes? Yes, okay. two minutes, Bryce. All right. So what he's claiming is um the father of this, he said, wrote about the Holy Spirit. 
And that's why he's trying to avoid the question because that's irrelevant to my question. I said at the Council of Nicaea. You don't even know Athanasius the, is the father of that council, dude. It's Bryson, he's it's the Bryson's main one. Right I already it's, answered this. This is so it's, silly. It's, it's Bryson's time. Bryson, I paused the clock. You still have now, about he did, um, a minute, he, 50 seconds. He deserves that one. I did it to him once. Uh, but um, as I said, I'm not talking about the guy. I'm talking about the council of Nicaea, which is why he's trying to. He's avoid the guy of that question. council, which you don't even know that. I, I don't care about what I'm his glad you don't care, the but council. the council did. At the council. Hey, it's Bryson's time. Let's let Bryson ask, ask the question. Jay, you'll have time to uh, thank to you. Let your time. At the council, the thing that I don't know about the council of Nicaea is like laughable at best. Uh, but at the council, they came to a decision about the um, the relationship, uh, lack of better terms, uh, between Jesus and the Father, and Arian lost. And after that, you don't council, even know his name. It's Arius. You don't even know. I mean, what Arius. You're talking my bad. The, the doctrine is called Arian. That's that, that's a mistake. It's fine. You made a few. You don't know what divine means. It's okay. We, we, we all make mistakes. No, I, Go ahead. I was right about it. it. You don't. You, you were wrong. About no, you divine. you was you was objectively no. wrong about the no, word divine. You, I'm not, I'm, you, I'm you not said about Google about it, dude. You said time. Google. I, 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 I did Google it. You Go ahead. You want me to show my Google's not a source. Show you. Google's not a source. You're over here saying Google? Did you know that's you, you lose a debate Webster. when you're saying Google? I mean, you know, dude. Webster, I mean, bro, you made a claim. Uh, uh, okay, you're trying so, to so sidetrack. Yeah, Webster, uh, if, right. if anybody go look, If anybody go research the Council of Nicaea, the Holy Spirit was not added to the Godhead as a result of that council. And if he says that's otherwise, because he was already part of the Godhead. Of course, he's not added uh, to wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. He just conceded that he, that, that, that was. No, I'm saying you don't even know what you're talking about. You're so bro, out to lunch, just, you have no he, clue. He just, he just admitted it, bro. That's why I'm I said laughing because, because you said added. because he knows you know you, you was being disingenuous. No, you know I'm you're not. being disingenuous, bro. That wasn't the, the council whole, of Nicaea. I've got all of Nicaea right here. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit was not a part uh decided to be part of the Godhead yes, he at is. the Council of Nicaea, and you know that too. You know that to be true. The too. church father of Nicaea wrote entire treatises about the Trinity. You just made a joke of yourself. No, you're trying to talk about the person and what they wrote. I'm talking about the council itself. The council accepted so his writings. This is, the council this is accepted, hilarious. Bro. The council accepted his writings and theology. That's why Athanasius says that the council of Nicaea was guided by the Holy Spirit. All right, Jay, you have two minutes on the clock for your time for cross-examination. Yeah, I mean, first of all, the Trinity is taught in the New Testament and it's taught in the Old Testament. The Trinity is taught in dozens of passages in the Old Testament, which the very thing that he thinks he can go to, which he doesn't actually believe, because if he doesn't worship God rightly, he can cite all these commandments all day long, which he thinks he keeps, but he doesn't. There are theophanies all throughout the Old Testament where the Father, the angel of the Lord, I mentioned them in my open statement, and the Spirit are all mentioned throughout the Old Testament. The Spirit, uh, the the, the angel of the Lord is called Yahweh many, many times in the Old Testament. He's distinct from the Father. Jesus says in John 5 that no man sees the Father at any time, but yet Moses talked and spoke to me, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3. Do you agree that it was Jesus that was talking to Moses on Mount Sinai? Oh, I've already said through text messages uh, that I'm not debating the Trinity, so I mean. It's. It, I think he, he's tying it into the, the debate about no, he, um, keeping, no, keeping I, the law. Yes, I did. Yes, I did because I made it a point. Oh, that yeah, did, I said, doesn't, you, this hey, doesn't matter. It's my time. I said, yeah, you don't want to talk about it because you know it will undo your whole position. Because I said, not. I said in John five, Jesus was at the mo the mountain giving the law to mm -hmm. Moses. So that means Jesus gave the the ceremonial law. Jesus gave the Mosaic law. Okay. That means he's the one that decides how you interpret it, and how it's fulfilled. Yes, he Jesus, said, correct. Yeah, he says in Luke, he who hears you hears me. That means yeah, the okay. apostles that he sent out had authority. And you admit that those apostles is where we get Papias and Irenaeus, right? Did they ordain them? No, I don't say that they ordained them, though. Oh, okay. So wait a minute. But you did accept Papias when he said that the uh, Gospel of Matthew comes from Matthew the disciple. I've I've already explained that. I'm not saying because he's not the one that made that decision, as I said beforehand. Oh, who made that decision? As I said beforehand, we don't know. He has. He oh, had so wait a minute. So you you don't actually know where the Gospel of Matthew comes from? All right, that'll be that'll be your your time this time, Jay. Okay. Um, Bryson, you have two minutes on the clock, and then Jay, you'll have a final two minutes, and then we'll go to closing statements and Q and A.
Okay, so I just want to, um, and this is what he wanted to do. We texted about this, and I see what he's trying to do. This is what anger does to people. Uh, but just to, just to be clear again, I just want to go back to what he said beforehand, where he was being just clear cut, disingenuous. Uh, if anybody knows about the Council of Nicaea, they were arguing over the, over the word homosius. Um, and trying to figure out how to use the word, blah, 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 what it means, yada, yada, yada. It uh, basically means one with the father or equal and whatever it was, uh, <clears throat> the Arian doctrine lost the vote. Now, I just want to make it clear that the Holy Spirit didn't get that title until a later council. And that's just an objective fact. That's why he keeps going to the writing uh, of people right outside of the council itself, because he's trying to be disingenuous. Uh, and now I, he's talking about Jesus being the one talking to Moses. The relevance is literally, it's, it's not even there because you're just helping my point. Because Jesus is the one that interprets it. You're right. And Jesus is the one who said in Matthew 5, until heaven and earth pass, not one dire to the child and no wise pass from the law. But as we already established, you believe Jesus has came through like a thief in the night. I don't. And we've already came to a um, conclusion uh, to our disagreement that can't be solved because we have two completely different views of that. So. All right. You have one minute left. What? Or, I'm sorry. 45 seconds now. Bro, my goodness. OK, let me just try to find something to toss, throw a wrench in this. Um, uh, uh, I can. Oh, by the way, he talked about um, he talked about his group being the the true church. As I said before, you don't even have the Holy Spirit if you don't keep the commandments. So I don't even believe if you don't keep the commandments and teach people to keep the commandments, you will have the Holy Spirit. And also, um, you will, you will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So I wonder what Jay feels about Jesus saying that. But I do agree that Jesus has the correct interpretation, which is why I'm quoting Jesus. You know, beautiful thing. Ho hopefully, one day you'll listen to him. Is that the end of my forty five seconds? Um, yep. You have two seconds left and it's gone. Yep, there you right. go. Uh, Jay, you have two minutes on the clock and then we'll go to closing statements. Yeah, I'm going to read the original Nicene Creed of 325. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible, and one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten of the Father, only begotten, that is, from the substance of the Father, God of light, God of God, light from light, true God of true God, begotten, not made of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. I'm going to skip down after the section on the incarnation. He rose again on the third day, ascended into heaven, and will come again in ju to judge the living and the dead, and I believe in the Holy Spirit. So the original Nicene Creed uh, includes the Holy Spirit, so you're completely wrong. And if you had even looked into this a little bit, you would have known that. If you had read any of Athanasius, you would have known that he constantly defends the full deity of all three persons. He's written many treatises against the Arians on that. And the council is not just a phrase uh, or a section of phrases that's the creed. The council includes things like the canons of Nicaea. The canons of Nicaea include all the other beliefs that we believe as Orthodox, like bishops, episcopate, feast days, like Pentecost, which we keep and you don't keep, by the way, which is ironic. <laughs> so the Orthodox Church actually does keep Pentecost. So um, were you aware that actually the original Nicene Creed does mention the Holy Spirit? Yeah, I mean that's. Oh, you said it does. You said it has no you mention. You understand? You understand? You said it has you no. You said you said there's no mention. You just. And you then did, I clarify just, what I meant. You no, you didn't. You, you said it's not there at all. You said it's not there at all. Bro, I clarify what no, I meant. No, you didn't. You, know you said it's not bro. there at all. You just you just got bodied again. No, you you're you're. So, you said it's not there at all. You like I don't know if you have a hearing. Rewind back. You said there's nothing about Holy Spirit there. You said there's nothing about Holy Spirit there. I'm not going to even repeat. I'm not going to repeat myself again, but I clarified. And when no, you, you get this back, you're not going to admit you wrong anyway. And who cares? So, all right. Jay, you have uh, 20 seconds left. You said it was not a part of the Godhead. It was aid, It was added later. You said it was not at Nicaea. I read you the creed. The creed just says we believe in the Holy Spirit. And if I'm you not said mistaken, it's not it's there. The, I think, <laughs> you said it wasn't bro, mentioned. It's in the creed. Bro, I clarified. I said it wasn't part of Godhead. You knew I clarified it, which is it's, why you just admitted that's how I clarified it, bro. It's listed as part of you the Godhead. You have to stop I, it, being so fake and You're lying. It's right the there. Council, and it's, it's the part council, of the Godhead. It, is, council, the part, it the is part of the Godhead. All right, and that's time. We're going to move to five-minute closing statements. Um, Bryson, you'll go, you'll go first and then Jay, you'll get your five minutes after everybody make sure to get your questions in, um, for the Q, uh, Q and a after the closing statements, um, you can get them in now. The Streamlabs link is in the show description as well as in the chat. Uh, Bryson, go ahead. Whenever you're ready, you have five minutes. That is a long time. Um, so let me start off by this. Anybody can go look this up yourself. Please go look up 
when the Trinitarian doctrine, like the doctrine of the Trinity, included the Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son all three together as co-equal, which is the current, uh, which is sort of the current doctrine of the Trinity. Y'all can look this up yourself. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Jay. Literally just look it up. Which council did it? He's being disingenuous, and, and that's clear cut. Um, and honestly, I don't even care about that aspect of the conversation. It's like clearly irrelevant to the 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 actual debate this was about. The debate about the debate about he's I think what it's called what uh Chase what is what is the debate called again? The title of it, literal uh, the title of the debate is um the who keeps the Torah. Who keeps the Torah? Okay, thank you. Um, which he clearly does not do, and that's why he spent his whole time during this debate admitting he doesn't do it. Uh, that's my closing statement. I just want to let y'all know a few verses. If you read John chapter 14, it clearly tells you that those who don't keep the commandments, they don't love Jesus and they don't receive the Holy Spirit. And before anybody attempts to say that Jesus is talking about a separate group of commandments, that is clearly inaccurate. He is talking about the commandments that came from the Father, which he explicitly expresses in John 14. So let's get this straight. If you don't keep the commandments, you don't love Jesus. You do not get the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Satan is not after you if you don't keep the commandments and the testimony of Jesus Christ, and which is Revelation 12. And we know in Daniel 7 that the beast, uh, that the beast will be arrogant and speak words against the most high and attempt to change his times and his laws. So these are things that are clear cut in the scripture, uh, no matter how you view the, no matter how you view the canon. And once again, Matthew 5. Uh, 17 to 21, which there will never be a sufficient answer for for people that don't keep the commandments. If you don't keep the commandments, you will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Not only if you don't keep the commandments, but if you don't teach other people to keep the commandments, you will undoubtedly be called least in the kingdom of heaven. That's clearly what Jesus said in this in context, which is why he never questioned if what I said was in context. And then after that, he said, if you do keep the commandments and teach people to keep the commandments, you will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, outside of the nonsense, I clearly understand the issue in this debate, like I've said five times, but I find myself having to repeat myself in this conversation, uh, which is that he believed Jesus has already came through like a thief in the night, as he already said happened. So he does indeed believe heaven and earth had, ha has passed. Now, if you read the book of Revelation or you read Matthew um, or you read the book of Daniel, especially Revelation 21, if heaven and earth has already passed, then we have a few issues. So if you, uh, I don't know. I don't even know if that's a, um, is that like a, a orthodoxy view or is that like a part of like the doctrine to say, they say that? Yes, um, most Eastern church fathers affirm that. Oh, okay. So, so, so that, is, that is an orthodoxy view. Okay. I just, I, I did, I did, I ain't gonna lie, I did not know that. Uh, so, if you read Revelation 21, though, which is funny, it tells you about the people that are going to the lake of fire, which is the second death. So my question is, where is that? When has that happened? If heaven and earth has passed, because that has to be coupled in with heaven and earth passing. Uh, and then it talks about who's going to the New Jerusalem. Um, where's the New Jerusalem? Because it can't be the United States of America, because obviously the New, the New Jerusalem will only be filled uh, with righteousness. Um, there's, there's a lot of issues uh, a lot of issues with believing that heaven and earth passed, but that wasn't the debate. So, um, and that that could be his view. I have I have nothing against that being his view. I just have a lot of questions about it. And I think it's a an accurate view. But that has seemed to be the problem with this discussion. We're talking from two different aspects of time biblically. Um, because if you believe that heaven and earth has passed, then yes, you believe the law is done away with. But again, where's the third temple then? You know, <laughs> like there, there there's so many things that has to go along. Uh, with that, and um, and also, if Jesus already came back, then there should be no sin. Uh, nobody should be nobody should be a sin. These people should be in the lake of fire. There's a lot of things I'm confused about. Once again, the base is always the same. I said in my opening statement, people choose side before it even starts. It's fine, it's dandy, but I clearly prove that you have to keep the commandments until heaven and earth pass. I think he understands that, but he believes it already has passed. And if you're listening and you don't keep the commandments, unless you think unless you're Orthodox Christian, obviously, because he said they all affirmed that, then you need to start keeping the commandments. Uh, I'm not here to force you or convince you, to be quite honest. Uh, what I am trying to do is warn you. How much time I got left, Chase? Please tell me that was like four minutes. I got five seconds? Fifteen. Hey, I'm, look at that, boy. Start talking again. Go ahead. Yo, um, 
yeah, I have no hatred towards Jay after this. I'm not one of the people that get mad at people after debates. I like I said, to be honest, I do think he debates sort of like a child, but uh it's part of the game. I still I still love him to death. And I think he's hilarious. Uh so that's pretty much well, it. Well, likewise, yeah, I don't have any personal animosity. For me, debates are just uh, you know, they're debates, they get heated. So uh is it my turn, Chase? It is it is your turn. Uh yeah, so I would say <clears throat> to kind of recap here at the end, um, you know, uh, I made some really clear debate uh, points early on that I don't think were answered. So I think when we uh, touched on the issue of reliance on the the church, the church's tradition, we had admissions in that in that re in regard. But uh, I don't think that it's consistent. I know that he had an answer, but I don't think they were good answers. And I, I think I explained why they weren't good for the Orthodox Church. We go not just with the Bible, but with the church that gave us that Bible. And that tradition is something that's inescapable from knowing things like Matthew was the disciple of Jesus. And if we rely on uh, patristic tradition, then that suggests to me that we also rely on that church of history as well. The law, uh, I think, has a purpose, it has a telos, and that purpose is realized in time in different ways. It's not realized only at the end of time in the eschaton. In our view, the eschaton, the end, already invaded the here and the now in the already not yet sense, this is a common term in biblical exegesis and theology, that the eschaton of the new Jerusalem that he referred to, that was brought when Jesus came. The eschaton is a marriage supper that invaded when Jesus established the Eucharistic Lord's Supper. That's why when John sees the, the worship of the church in heaven, when he looks up in uh, Revelation chapters 5 and 6, he sees a liturgical service with incense and vestments and a priesthood and an altar. All of those things were brought to the earth. They were established as the fulfillment of the types of Israel. So we don't discard the law. We honor the law by fulfilling and obeying it in terms of its purpose. Bryson has separated the law from its purpose, which is Jesus's church, which is the living embodiment of the law, the ark, the temple, the temple that he's waiting for already exists. It's the temple that Peter describes as the church, the new Jerusalem, the heavenly kingdom and city that came down to earth at Jesus's first advent. And that's why all of his theology has missed the fact that the destruction of the temple is the pre-signifier, a la Daniel 9 and Genesis 49, of the establishment of the heavenly city. Now, Paul says to the Galatians in Galatians 4, you are already members of the heavenly Jerusalem the city of above, right? That's the church, the church in history, the kingdom, which is prophesied multiple times in the Psalms, multiple times in Isaiah. If you look at Romans 15 and 16, Paul cites the Psalms multiple times about Israel and the nations. And he says to the church at Rome, you are the fulfillment of those things. Just like when I mentioned Joel 2, Pentecost, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That's not talking about the end times. That's talking about Acts 2. The last days is the last days of the first administration of the Mosaic Covenant. The new Adam has come. The old temple goes away. And that's why in the Orthodox Church, for example, you will find, I'm going to screen share here for a second. <clears throat> Before I do that, what does the uh, original Nicene Creed say? Is it Trinitarian? Absolutely. Why is it Trinitarian? Because this, co this confession right here, by the way, is directly out of the writings of Athanasius. And so when they affirm Athanasius' theology, which they do, they are affirming his interpretation of this text. The text is Trinitarian. And we know it's Trinitarian because Athanasius taught the Trinity. They're affirming the Trinity in the way that he teaches it. And the Holy Spirit is clear as day right there. One minute. Now, in regard to, let me stop sharing this. Uh, the other points I wanted to make about <clears throat> the early church, you'll notice there is the synagogues that we see in Dura Europos in the earliest days of Christianity, for example. The synagogues themselves had icons. They look like Orthodox churches. Why do they look like Orthodox churches? Because the, the, church, the Orthodox church took the temple and synagogue worship, the very thing that Bryson's searching for, 
It exists already in the Orthodox Church, which has all of this worship, all of this liturgy, all the things that he's trying to find. And I had one other, I thought this was a funny illustrative meme. Wonder where the true Messianic Judaism is. Well, guess what? It's staring Bryson right in the face. Here's the Old Testament priest with his garb. And what, what do you know? The New Testament priesthood and church why it looks just like them. That'll there's be time. A, there's a priest in the ark and the temple, etc. All right. Awesome. Well, um, we're going to get into the super chat Q and a Bryce, before we do that, um, Bryson, do you want to take a second and shout yourself out where people can find you? Um, and all that? No, we can just get right to it. Okay, go ahead. We'll have a 30 minute uh, Q and a through the super by the, chats. By the way, uh, Chase, if you would, um, because we got a lot of super chats and I don't know. I mean, I, Bryson's welcome to stay as long as he, as, as he wants to and answer them all. But I mean, there's a lot. So, um, any like, questions come my way, I will answer it. Okay, cool. Chase, uh, should, should we set like a time? Because I mean, there's like, I can, I can set a timer to try to get, uh, get, get you guys out of here in 30 minutes and we can focus on the Bryson ones maybe, um, so that he can have time to address well, those. Does that sound good to you? Bryson, you want to do that where it's like, I mean, because there's like, there might be another hour or two of this. Do you want to hang around? Do you want to, what do you want to do? Uh, I might do another hour, two, two hours, maybe, but an hour for sure. All right, let's this just try cool to, the questions are. Right, the questions let's are just try to get through them. You know, let's do it. Yeah, I'm having to scroll. I'm, I'm scrolling back to the very beginning. It's way back here. Let's see. Uh, are you going to repeat them for me? Because I, I don't see I'm, I'm gonna read. Yeah, I'm going to read them out. It's okay. just, I'm trying to find where they begin. There's a bunch. So Kristen says for $5, uh, Bryson on life support with an opening statement. I don't see any arguments. Uh, do you want to react to any of them or do you want me just to keep reading through them until it's a question? Uh, I mean, my, my arguments were very clear cut, very scriptural in context, Bible verses. That was never challenged. Bone Man so, 538 for $100 says, thank you. Thank you so much, Bone Man. Theosis uh, Pilgrim $10. Shout out to Diet Soda Light. Chase, you have a phenomenal mustache. Thanks for another great debate, uh, Jay. Thank you. Bryson Fan 777. Hello, Bryson. I have a suggestion for you for a new song, uh, Bible Thumper Part 2. Jay Dyer is my daddy. <laughs> He's not a Bible thumper, though. That's true. Ender $10. JD, your opening argument was beautiful. Uh, uh, one of the be beautifulest things I've heard, no cap. You nuked Bryson. Glory to God. Blessed be all of you guys and your families dale five dollars bryson uh you don't want to get into the theophanies and dale says again bryson you shouldn't debate again i made my point on what i wanted to debate clear with jay through text messages i made it so clear that you can't even can't even miss say it um and once again a lot of y'all just clearly buy it that's, that's how it that's how it goes uh but the reality of the situation is uh everything i said was correct Everything, including the definition of divine. I just want to throw that in there again. The only difference, as I said for a 50 year time, is as Orthodox Christians, y'all believe that heaven and earth has already passed. Um, so I mean that's that that that's just pretty much it. Bryson 777. Uh Bryson, you wasted Jay's time. This is embarrassing. You got smoke. Stick to your grifty music. Storm the cap, five dollars. Bro, I was gonna ask you a question. I don't care anymore. Just do your research. Dale one dollar. Bryson smokes crack. Black Party Vintage $1 to, uh, to Bryson. If Christ fulfilled the law, what are you trying to keep? Paul says you'll be judged by the law if you try to keep it. Um, Once again, this is just like 2 Peter 3.16 says, ignorant and unstable people take Paul out of context and use them for their own destruction. Uh, and I explained it during the thing. When Paul says you, you're dead to the law, well, first off, a field doesn't mean to nullify because Jesus quite literally told you that it doesn't mean to nullify. A matter of fact, he said, if anybody nullifies one of the least of these commandments, they'll be called least in the kingdom of heaven again, which is why a lot of people need to listen and read the Bible. Uh, but when it comes to Paul, he says dead to the law. He's talking about being dead to sin, which I clearly told you he explains in Romans 6. I think if a lot of y'all actually picked up the Bible, um, we'll have a different conversation. Block Party Vintage. Uh, no, excuse me. Dale, $1. Stop talking, Bryson. Noah, $5. Bryson, you gave up. I've never seen anything like it. Bryson is a sorry heretic. Get triggered, $10. Bryson, please stop. You're embarrassing yourself. Jay atomized you. Uh, you should apologize for wasting everyone's time. Johnny, $10. This is for Bryson. 
in reference to King St. David's prophecy of Christ having an eternal priesthood in Psalm 109.4, where does your church have the order of Melchizedek in your Gnostic sect? Here's a hint. It's not uh, a last supper of crackers and grape juice. The order of Melchizedek, thank you, it's not only in the Tanakh, that is also in Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, I talked about that also, which is beautiful. Um, and it's not just crackers and grape juice. Well, I'm going to say something, a lot of y'all going to be offended because obviously people in the chat are biased, but obviously I do not care. Um, when you say it's not just crackers and grape juice, the only difference between what um, um, Protestant Christians believe versus what y'all believe, y'all believe is really the blood of Christ and literally the uh, um, the body of Christ, but you're not literally doing that. You just believe that is happening. Um, you can believe that, but you're you're actually just eating bread. Uh, and uh, and drinking drinking wine or juice. That's just the objective truth. So the what well, he said. What's your take on the Melchizedekian priesthood? You you say you have that. Correct. Okay. John Vander shoot five dollars. Bryson, uh, this was like an hour and a half ago. Bryson is doing now what Jay will say when people commit the word concept fallacy. That was correct. I did say that. Bryson. Uh, I'm not going to read that. Uh, get triggered, $5. Bryson is a baby bitch. Sorry. Jay Zuna, $10. Bryson, accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Palamism respecter. If you go ahead. Christ, you Christ is already my Lord and Savior. Um, and my evidence of that is that I keep the commandments of God. That's how you know you love him. Uh, because if you don't keep the commandments, you don't love Jesus. Palamism respecter, $3. One of the la largest group, uh, Judaizing groups was Nazarenes. They rejected... Matthew, Mark, Luke, and uh, Gospel of John. Does Bryson believe that those should be rejected? What about the Ebionites who believed in a Gospel of the Ebionites? Should that be part of his Bible? Um, No, and just to go back to something real quick, this is why I said do the research and I wasn't saying it to be rude or anything like that, but according to modern terminology, they call them Jewish Christians, and it's a religious sect that emerged from Judea during the first century AD, which the whole, the only thing about this is, this is why I said I wasn't generalizing, it's just literally what it is. Literally, the criteria for being a part of this group is believe Jesus to be the prophesied Messiah and maintain the observance of Jewish law. Um, and this is found in the earliest Christianity that you can never, uh, that you can never um, be in. Matter of fact, this is what, according to some sources, actually developed in and a lot of these people actually went on and became orthodox christians or catholics but that's just a little history lesson andy fought three dollars i don't know what that means where are the rubenizers get triggered ten dollars please make this stop i'm going to the emergency room for secondhand embarrassment a person should know that bryson is wrong uh about the trinity and this can't be ignored get triggered ten dollars jay here's a ten dollar so you because you wasted your time tonight get triggered five dollars i, I want to respond to that trinity thing real quick uh i've had a million like talked about trinity a million times and the, the issue is honestly a lot of the people that represented trinity a lot of y'all are vowel and um a lot of people are like uh, biblically illiterate but y'all can have y'all view y'all have never went saw me went to somebody and be like oh my goodness you believe in the trinity you're not a christian uh, because the bible clearly says do not be spoiled with vain philosophy and there's a reason uh, why when the Bible makes judgments and all the judgments you can make on somebody is in the scripture, not one judgment says, if you don't believe in the Trinity, this, if you don't believe in the Trinity, that, that doesn't even exist in scripture. So a lot of y'all are making unrighteous judgments and pitting yourselves in yeah, the hellfire. But, fire but the scripture doesn't that. tell you what goes in the scripture either. So you don't even follow that. I don't, I mean, now you're just doing a, a side argument, which is a fallacy. I, I mean, do, no, do, it's do. not. <laughs> How, what is the side argument fallacy? Uh, anonymous ten dollars for Bryson. In re uh, we already asked that one. Soma one dollar. Bryson, uh, get your face off the screen. Chryson ten dollars. I'll pay you not to debate an ignorant uh, wall next time. This man is either uh, not very smart or disingenuous and is just a shill. Soma one dollar. Bryson, your music is bad. Bone man one dollar. Is Yah Yahuwah Hamashiach not Jesus Christ? And then it's a bunch of gibberish. G Mall, five dollars. Yes, that is just real quick. Yes, yes, that is Jesus Christ because he's the promised Messiah. And to the person saying that uh, my music sucks, I know that I know a lot of y'all like grippers hate me because I've been on y'all head top lately. Uh, check the charts and check what I do versus what you do. You hear me? I got some pretty good. And Nick, and Nick Fuentes listens to it. Ding. 
<laughs> Gmall, five dollars. Uh, Catboy Defender debates the Trinity. John Vandershoot, one dollar. Bryson, don't cry. It'll be over soon. Bone Man, one dollar. I'm not reading that one. John Vandershoot. Bryson asks about Arian's friend, St. Erroneous of lying <laughs> instead of lion. Turbo Diesel, five dollars. Jay, advertise your chalk. Uh, yeah, by the way, the show sponsor is chalk.com. If you want to head over to chalk.com, get access to the best in supplements over there. Use the promo code J50 to get 50% off. Uh, John Vandersloot, $1. Bryson, you are the Aryan word concept master debater. Bone Man, $5. Jesus was and is and is to come. He was at Mount Sinai giving of the law. Uh... Christmas trees are bad because they're Asherah poles. Okay, whatever. FJ, $1. J, an ex-Muslim Christian, a Muslim ex-Christian asked me to Google, is the Trinity in the Bible? He got giddy because the Trinity is not listed in the Bible. Okay, yeah, but so what? Rachel Wilson, $5. Bryson, is Jesus God? Yes, Jesus can be referred to as God because he's from God, same essence, and we are uh, subject to him, which is in Corinthians. Can I be referred to as God because I'm also from God? Am I subject to you? Oh, so wait a minute. Is it just from God or is it also being subject? I, I, I answered both, didn't I, though? Well, I mean, you said divinity means from God, and then you said also it subject. It does. Well, because he proceeded forth from God, like quite literally. He's creature, the only begotten yeah, son. Creature, creatures come from God, too. No, he's the only begotten son that proceeded forth yeah, from God. Yeah, but creatures come from God. Uniquely. Wait, wait. Bro, goodness gracious. When the Bible uses the word begotten, that means uniquely brought forth. Secondly, I'm not subject to you. We are subject to Jesus Christ, which is why, first off, he's our Lord and our God. But Jesus will also be subject to the Father which is why they're not co-equal, even though I know the argument, oh, they're 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 equal in 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 essence, not role. Uh, which is cool. You can have that uh that argument if you want it. I'm just saying I don't I don't have to I don't have to believe in that. Brazil three dollars. How is the Orthodox true if the Ten Commandments say not to make idols? Uh, icons aren't idols. John Vandershoot, one dollar. J Body Bryson, don't cry. Forty got house on the lake, one dollar. <laughs> Bryson, you're out of your wheelhouse. Uh You'll never forget this. Orthodoxy is the end goal. Cry, $3. <clears throat> you know your slow boy lost the debate when he's spending the time laughing, making backhanded comments, says, who cares? Uh, I've seen this in his body language. He's acting like a child. J646. Bryson. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. So keep your questions, uh, you know, civil. Priscilla, $3. Why should we believe that all has been fulfilled? I didn't say all is fulfilled. I said that there's a mirrored fulfillment, and I gave the example of the abomination of desolation. Uh, I, I do want to respond to sure. that though, because uh, if Jesus had already, if Jesus has already came back like a thief in the night, how is everything not fulfilled? That's just the question I have. Yeah, so outside. Is, you can answer your choose not yeah. to. So parcel preterism is the idea that there's a mirrored fulfillment, which I said multiple times, because if you look at the theology of the temple in the book of Hebrews, it's described as a symbol of the three heavens atmosphere heaven space heaven and then the third heavens that paul talks about god's heaven so it has a three-tiered structure because it's a model of the universe the tearing away of the temple in 70 a.d is a sign of the tearing away of this physical cosmos at the end of the world that's what i've been trying to say oh i heard it i just thought you were gonna add something extra um never mind bays pay piggy five dollars if oppenheimer was able to weaponize bryson's arrogance he could build a big bomb to blow up the universe <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm the arrogant one for sure. That's the, yeah, uh, let's, let's go with that one. Bone Man 538, $5. Comment in the chat. He is confusing Mosaic Law and the commandments to keep the law. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to read the rest of that. Uh, so I don't know. Once again, if y'all know what the law is, the law is referring to the first five books of Moses, which includes the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments comes from the law. Um, that's why Jesus literally says that in Matthew 5, 17, like literally the first verse. And then he goes explain to you to explain to you some of those commandments and not every one of those commandments is in the 10 commandments. Once again, man, reading the Bible is essential. John Vandershoot, $1. Can we get a goober in the chat? I don't know what that is. Jim Bob, $5. Bryson, if Jesus is the only begotten son, as you say, does he share the divine nature? If he shares the divine nature, is he not also the eternal son? 
I, I, I already said that. Uh, so of course he shares the nature. He came forth from him uniquely. So of course he shares the nature. Of course he's eternal, uh, the divine son. I don't, I'm never disagree with that. But so. you think he's lesser? What did you say? Oh yeah. He is lesser than a father because he clearly said he was. So, I mean, do, don't you think something could be lesser in different senses? I know the argument, bro. Lesser in role, not essence. That is the argument. And if that argument makes sense to y'all, y'all can have it. I don't, yeah, but I want to know why you, you disagree said. with it. Because it's not there. Jesus said, my there. father is greater than I. And by the way. In, so in, so in the way that you go about your doctrine is one verse. You don't think that the whole of the gospel of John tells us that? It doesn't tell you that. It never. It matter of fact, John 10. It does. I mean, John 10, 30 says, I and the father are one. If you read the context to it, it's not saying they're equal. All it's of the just works the father, father does. Every, everything the father has, he has given to me. Correct. He was given it. What does that mean? It means he possesses the same power. How? All the how? works the how? Father does. How? How does he? How does he possess the same power? Because it's given to him. He's eternally begotten. Exactly. And he. And by the way, so if why you does that mean he's lesser? I'm about to explain it to you. If you go to Corinthians when it said we will be subjected to Jesus, it literally said Jesus will be subject to the. That father. doesn't mean ontologically so, different. Obviously, here in, we go in, in power. This, this you is how this argument. So, do you understand that all of your arguments are based on only one interpretation, right? No, there, no. There's here's the thing. The Bible says, "Be careful not to add to it." So, if Jesus says, yeah, but, "My Father is greater than I," and, and, and then you claim yeah, that, well, in what in, sense do you think? That's word, do you think that's words? Role, okay, but do you think words only have one meaning? That seems to be a recurring thing. Your argument is that it's in role. Not essence. This, so this, you, this, this is. I know. This is, this, what I'm asking. This is the you, argument. Do you? Concede, and what I'm telling you is. What I'm telling you is that's not in that context. How do you? Jesus no, didn't but say that. How do you know that? Not it's once not in did that Jesus context? even. You say what? How do you know that it's not in that? It can't be read that way. You're just saying that's not what it means, and I want to know no, how you know. I never said it can't be read that way. I'm saying, but to do so, you have to do two things. You have to inject your belief system into that scripture, you and you have that. to add to Everyone it. Everyone does that. Which, which, which is, I, read, I read it verbatim and I just say what it is. That, yeah, so, but I mean, text, that's, that, yeah, text that, don't that, work that way. Is. You understand? Text don't work that way. It don't work like it obviously doesn't work like they, that that way in, in, in your point no, of view. No, it doesn't work like that for anybody. It doesn't Christian. work like that for anybody. Okay. And you never thought about that? You can have that? that view. But have you never thought about that? Hey, bro, you want to add to the Bible? Do it. Adding I'm to a, the Bible. I already told you about to say here. Listen, I, I already know all the arguments. I said that everybody reads their view into the text. So the question is who's correct? Not do we have a well? A if Jesus says my Father is greater than I, if I tell you I'm greater than you right now, what just does that, like, what the text, that mean? Yeah, but just citing that doesn't tell me that your reading is correct. I'm asking you, how do you know your reading is correct? What do you mean? In in the Bible, this is how you do it. This is proper exegesis. Yeah, text. How do you know this? This is what I'm asking. Oh, here we go. Uh, nah, the, you okay. have a principle that you questions. rely on, and I want to know go, how, here, here, how do you know here, here, it's the right here, here principle? We go, here, it's a valid question. Fate. It's a valid you favor. No, this is going back to your favorite argument. Okay, well, if so the you're church not gave it to you, you, you can't know. you can't separate so you're just you can't separate the canon from the church. <laughs> no, I'm asking I'm not asking about the canon. I'm asking about how do you know that your interpretation of the text is correct? And you're saying Bible, because chapter, verse, context. That's, that's uh, how you that's know. Right. oh, wait a minute. So now it's broader than just the verse. I I've said from the beginning context. Okay, but how do we know I, that I you, said that since the beginning is my opening statement. But how do you know that your interpretation is your is correct? And you're saying because my interpretation is correct. Well, simple. You see, because some things can't be interpreted multiple ways. Okay, but and some things can't. How do you know which those are? I'm about, I'm about to, I'm about to show it to you right now. If you read Matthew five seventeen to twenty one, which I've been saying, there's only one way to interpret. It. Uh, so how do you know that? The only, the only, how the only do, way. Well, you hold can on. So hold on. So your whole case rests on this, and it's just asserting and reasserting your presuppositions. What if? No, it's not. It is because you're just saying that it's it's the only way to read it. But I want to know how that's how do we know that? How do we know that? Simple. This is how you do it. I'm about to try to break it down for you line by line. Do not think I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. This is verse 17. I'm not asking you to read me the verses. I want to know. I'm your not reading it for you. I'm reading it so you I can have your answer because you're not going to understand. That's unless not I break telling it down. me that you have the right interpretation. Well, I'm, I'm about to try to break it down for you. So I don't need to try to break down. it down for you. You it's don't. It's not a question of you breaking down the text. It's a question. It of, is. No, it's not. But that, but, but so I feel like it is. So, so it's circular. You, listen, so you have you a circular me, argument. Listen, exactly. you have two choices right now. You either let me respond how I want to respond, or you just move to the next question. Let's just this move is, on. Very simple. I don't thing. need you to read me the passage because it's not answering. I'm not the reading it for you. I'm reading it to help anybody that's listening understand how you know something's out of context or not. The question is your. It's not a deflection. It's only deflection because you don't want me to do it. 
It's just like, bro, like did, did, this is why I say it's like talking to like, a child. I don't want bro. you to read the text. That's not hurting me at all, dude. <laughs> Let's just move okay. on. Palamism. Yeah, see, there we go. We move on. Great. Palamism inspector, $1. Bryson's eschatology is only futuristic. Jay is arguing for partial preterism. Correct. Bryson was confused about that. Jay is right because the sun will come at the end, but his coming to destroy the temple uh, was part of that fulfillment. Exactly. Vladiro. I'm not confused about I'm not confused about that. I just think it's incorrect. So. Vladiro, $3. The Pharisees were scandaled, be, scandalized because Jesus healed people on the Sabbath, told people to carry their bed, interacted with the Samaritans. Uh, was Jesus denying the commandments when he did this? Um, the the clear answer is no. That's why every time somebody, uh, the Pharisees claim that Jesus broke the Sabbath, Jesus argued with them. Not once did Jesus say, yeah, I broke the Sabbath because that never happened because obviously Jesus is perfect and can't break the law. Um, so, so, I mean, so that's just common sense. But secondly, uh, when you made this claim, they were trying to go against Jesus. That's why if you read the book of Matthew or read any gospel, Jesus' entire point to the Pharisees was to say, y'all are not keeping the commandments of God. Y'all are keeping the traditions of man. That was his contention uh, with the Pharisees. So, I mean, and then when you say that, let me tell you something, a secret. The Bible says Jesus only came for the lost sheep of Israel, and he told his apostles to not even go preach to Gentiles. That's a fun fact for you. Yeah, before he then later told him to go preach to the Gentiles. So maybe you should read the rest of the Gospels. So you you have no idea. Oh, I, I know the whole about. Gospels, and no, I quiz myself don't. on them, and no, I always get 100% you, you on all no of them. You have no clue what you're talking about. Jim bought $5. If Christ is a creature, how is everything created through him? He is uniquely begotten. I don't know why y'all, y'all are sort of like adding to what I'm saying. I don't know so what you I'm saying. Think God Jesus, has, you, you think God has Jesus. Parts. You think you're a polytheist. You think God has, there's multiple gods to worship. There's the father no, and then there's I a don't. lesser God. No, oh, so the, I've never so, said that. So y'all just, just so, make it up. So. so there's partial divinity. Jesus is what? 75% God. The father's fully God. You said he's, no, sub, you Jesus, said he's subordinate. He is subordinate for a fact. Oh, so, he's, so he's lesser. Yes. Oh, okay. So the there's what? So there's what? Eighty percent God in Jesus? Do you think God has no, I mean, parts? It, this, this, these, these are just Jesus' words. The percentages. I, mean, I don't really. That, that, no, that's you just, just misinterpret the this words, and you're a polytheist. <laughs> <laughs> I misinterpret what he said. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, everything so, tonight so, you've and, 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 you've misinterpreted no, everything. And tonight. that's why you is that why you haven't been able to prove I took one thing out of context? Like not one. You've never been able to prove I took even one thing out of context. You know why no, you can't do that? Why I, that's why I asked you about your you know it's funny. And I mean, this is like a fun thing. If me and you got on live stream and we quizzed ourselves on the Gospels, I know for an absolute fact I would get a high score to you on every single chapter. Now you're just in pre list, dude. Priscilla, $3. Why is the Orthodox Church <laughs> true when they've added and subtracted? They have not added and subtracted, so I don't know what you're talking about. It's the book. <laughs> it's, the book it's the church that put the Bible together based on its tradition. <laughs> Veronica, $5. Can you experience depth and richness in orthodoxy if you do you'll see god with new eyes god bless have mercy on you all thank you jay constant for one dollar 29 bryson my heart aches for you you are in a self-erected judaized christianity these theological throwdowns have been calmed have been calmed by our holy fathers only heresies get resurrected centuries later please check out a divine liturgy dan oh uh, we'll go ahead we'll see my response will be we'll see um we'll see on judgment day who's right and who's wrong you can have your belief system because my heart aches for you too um so i guess the only true answer to that is we'll see on judgment day who's right and who's wrong dan ten dollars bryson you rely on matthew and you trust it's on authenticity but if those scriptures are dependent upon the canonization that took place that is a, is a decision of the church, then you don't keep the law and you do not have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's just inaccurate, like I said, because uh, before any canon, these are already viewed as scriptures. So. Yeah, but so? 200 why, years why, prior. Why, why are we supposed to choose just because it's prior and some guy that you don't, well, he, he, he some guy that you reject, you, he, he thinks it was. Why, why is well, that the right one? The person that did a super chat claims that it relies on canon, and I'm just disproving that for an absolute fact that it doesn't well, rely but on th canon. That's not what the canon is. The canon is a decision that's made centuries later about the totality of the books. That's not what, exactly. that's not what Papias is. I, I know that's not what Papias is. What are you talking about? That's my point. <laughs> then it's not answering the question. The question I, is, why is that authoritative if your criteria is not a sufficient criteria? 
I just I've explained this like 50 times. First of all, that wasn't his but question. You if you want to add to it, it, let me try to answer it for the 50th time. And by the way, since we are at yeah, you Google, you're, if you're you answering, me but once, it's not a good I'm not answering it's no It's not longer. a good answer. Do you understand? I understand you're answering, <laughs> but it's not a coherent answer. It's not a coherent answer for you, even though you've accepted everything I've no, said. Nobody here so, thinks it's a coherent answer, bro. Because everybody in here you think is every, biased towards your true. point of view. That's not true. We got and that's absolutely no, true. This is not. your page. We got double. This is so fake. I got double the audience I normally get. So at least half of these people are from because your, my your name audience. is on it. Not because. And by the way, Groypers hate oh, so me. So wait a, a minute. So your name like, is on it, and you think that they came for me? They came for you? No, people come because they hate Bryson Gray. This is a reality of life, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. Gig, uh, it's a gig, fact. Giga Lobster Supreme 420, $5. God bless. Uh, may God grant Bryson charity. Val, $3. Can we get a rap collab with Bryson and Jay? Maybe when uh, a, a rendition of Pay Piggy. I don't know if Bryson's heard my rap. He might think it's funny. I don't know. You I gotta, rap? I got a joke rap, yeah. Bro, where what? is this? Well, he may, uh, saying Jay rapped is like asking if Picasso painted Jay and <laughs> entire musical style. I'll send it to you later. I'll send um, it to you later. It, it, it's, it's, it's pretty hardcore. I'm a musician as well, and it, it changed my <laughs> world. <laughs> He's joking. It's joke. It's joking. I, I'm, messing, I gotta, I'm messing around. <laughs> I gotta hear it. Don't I'll no send count. you my rap song later. You can see if you think it's funny or not. Okay, uh, bet. Christ Risen 389. Bryson, uh, debates like the Muslim Shabir Ali with his presupposition of clear versus vague texts are assumed. In a relative sense, the terms can be used, but you have a rigid arbitrary application. You say some are clear, some are vague, but we don't know essentially how you got to that conclusion. Can I respond and actually explain it this time? Sure. And the best way to do this is to try to get you to come up with a different one. So if G some things have to be true, right? Objectively true. So if Jesus say, I did not come to abide the law of the prophets. What are the law of the prophets? What, what, what does that even mean? What does the law of the prophets mean? Well, objectively speaking, this means the books of Moses and the prophets from the Tanakh. That is an objective truth that everybody has to agree with right there off the rip. Let's yes. start with that. These have to not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Now, that fulfill word, a lot of people get tripped up on. But once you go to the Greek, you obviously realize what it means. And you, we already know it can't mean to do away with because he just said that's not what he, why he came. So th these are things that you would have to agree yeah, with, and, unfortunately. And I, already, I already replied to this as well by saying that there's multiple ways to interpret this significance. And the Orthodox church does spiritually keep every bit of the law, even the ceremonial commands. For example, so, for example, as, when Paul says that you should not muzzle an ox, which is a command in Deuteronomy, he says that's an uh, application of the spiritual principle to the right of ministers to, to, uh, in first Corinthians to get paid. He does the same thing in the new Testament. When you have the application of the Passover and whatnot to the Eucharistic liturgy, he calls Christ our Passover. He's referring to Exodus. So all of these principles, like not sewing two, pat two pieces of, of fabric on a garment that's mentioned in Deuteronomy, that's the same thing as Paul's principle about not sowing in, two uh, two, in a single field two seeds, which means to not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So I can affirm in every bit that we keep every bit of the law. because so, we have, so we interpret those things the way the apostles do. You don't. You interpret them in a low-tier Low quality, literal. Low tier, sense. low quality, meaning exactly what he meant. Exactly so when Jesus, what, when, no, exactly so, what Hebrews says you're apostate so, for. So, 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 by the way, when Jesus said this, he was referring to the law of the prophets. So when Jesus was talking, he was not referring to Paul. He was referring to the law of the prophets. And by the way, uh, he, he's like referring to all multiple. of his commands, including his commands to Paul, who appeared to Paul, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Which is why a lot of people take him out of context to get him confused. Which no, is no, you just but, misinterpret it. No, nothing's been taken out of context except the fact. Oh, that you I don't proved listen. that like eight times. No, you didn't. None you, of my, you gave nothing, an arbitrary nothing, criteria. Nothing. Of vague. Nothing. What? No, you gave well, vague that, and clear, but you don't have any way to adjudicate when you know that's vague and clear. You just it, you it, just reaffirmed it, it, your position. It wasn't vague. This conversation is interesting. No, you're because, saying it's not, but you don't have a way to tell us when it's clear and when it's vague. You just say it is and it isn't. Can I ask you a question? When Jesus said "Law of the Prophets." Was he referring to the law of Moses and the and the rest of the Tanakh? Absolutely, and I just answered that. So that's a wait. wait. I, I'm I'm not, I don't I'm not talking about your answer. Are you admitting yeah, you just that that don't like the answer? Right. I never I never said you didn't answer. What are you talking about? Is that an objective truth that when Jesus said that he is referring 
to the law of Moses I'm and the rest of the Tanakh. I'm simply saying that you don't understand how it's kept. We do keep it, but not in the way that no, you think. No, 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 you, you, you literally think don't. wrong, but it's okay. No, 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 I, I don't. Y'all just like add into the word. You know, I just walked up to it. He just said it's objective. You don't, don't have the word. rest. You, you don't have the word. You can use, you, you can you use that. You, you have you can your extrapolate that. You can extrapolate that to the rest of the Bible. He just admitted that it was an objective truth, what Jesus was saying right there. And I mean, th that's why he had to jump okay. in and say, we actually do Let's keep the law, on. even I though he believes Minecraft, heaven and earth passed. $100. But he doesn't, though. But it's okay. It's I said good. in Minecraft, $100. Bryson, do you believe in the Trinity? Also, uh, it's a win for Jay. Bryson has already answered that. He says you can believe it or not believe it. Do you want to answer that? Um. Yeah, so the Trinity, don't subscribe to the Trinity. The modern doctrine is no. Uh, Tertullian's Trinity has some lot has some logic to it, but I don't completely subscribe to that either. Uh, I subscribe to um what the Bible says, Jesus is Lord. I believe in Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, only way to the Father. I believe in the things that the Bible calls necessary and say if you don't believe this, you will go to hell. Anything extra is a uh, philosophy that the Bible preaches against. Captain, I'm not going to read that one. Uh, Captain Steve, two dollars. Jay, how do you? reconcile that the orthodox church doesn't keep commands revelation 12 has qualifications seven Correct. day sabbath what about the ceremony of the ontology and sanctity that existed prior to the sin in the garden i don't know what that means but uh the orthodox church does honor the sabbath if you go to any vespers liturgy on the seventh day uh, we have every we have services every saturday which does honor the sabbath low tier god one dollar no seriously no, I'm not. I'm not reading that. Uh, Christ is risen, uh, bro. Right. Literally, you can read. I don't care how disrespectful. No, it I don't is. want to read it for my channel. Oh, uh, okay. It's like violation of you know. Christ is risen. Oh, like, okay. like crazy stuff. Like one thirty. Uh, Bryson, if Yeshua should be upheld as a translation, then why do the apostles write Christ's name in Greek in the Greek Gospels? What do you mean the Gospels are written in Greek? Now Matthew right. may be a little bit different according to Papias. Uh, but it was written in Greek. Now, the um, the unfortunate thing, though, is his name is definitely Yeshua. I mean, you can call him Christ uh, if you want to, but I think Yeshua would be more likely what he would have been called uh, versus Christ. I think objectively that's true, though. Dan, $10. Bryson, <clears throat> what is the authority <laughs> that you rest your belief on for, for example, the uh, citation of Matthew as part of the gospels or as a inspired text uh because no matter how early you go before everything the uh, the gospels are already going around even amongst what so the, no the question you understand you never got this question the what question is how do you know that it's a gospel and you just keep saying the gospels were going around you, you never I'm, you don't understand I'm, I'm, this it's a I'm very answering question. it you just don't you just don't like you just don't like you the said answer. the gospels were going around the question is how do we know matthew yeah. the gospel so let, let, let me try to word it to you this way. The consensus, the consensus, even before any council, even before our uh, Iranians, even before him, the consensus was that this was the gospel amongst Jewish Christians, amongst every sect you could think of. Oh, uh, and now, why are we, why are we, why are we, why are we supposed to go with consensus on that and not the consensus about all of our, the rest of our Orthodox theology that has the consensus? Oh, well, a lot of your theology is just anti-Bible, so. Yeah, but your principle, your first principle is consensus, and now you're denying consensus. So it's arbitrary. No, I'm talking you about consensus. You know what arbitrary on... means? Do you know what that means? Okay, let me just, let me help you out real quick. No, you're not when helping me out. It's a question. Don't, don't condescend. You're not condescending to me. Like you don't help I'm, me out. I'm, I'm, it's I'm a talking, question. I'm talking about consensus. Okay, bro. You do this all the time. Every time you debate, you do condescending things. Please don't get in your emotions about it, bro. You've done it a million if times. you're not going to ask the question, I mean, look. You, it's arbitrary. All right, bro. You said Next question, but listen, every consensus? time you ask a question, it takes a, it takes thirty minutes because to even you don't get to the answer. answer because you talk too much. Because you no, don't you answer. just don't. You, you just no, literally don't. I don't enjoy let the people. Answer. I don't let people filibuster. I'm not filibustering. I, I'm trying to explain you the answer. I've explained it eighty eight times. And no, you, you just don't like you the don't answer. answer the objections. Do you understand? No, that? I do answer the objections. You just don't like no, the no, objections no. because of You're, your preconceived notion nope. about what you believe about the canon and what the authority. I just I just explain how what you said is arbitrary. Listen, the funniest thing is I don't think you know what it means. I actually only, don't. I don't think you know what it means to be arbitrary. Once again, every time you claim I don't know what something means, I think it's clearly about this debate. I know Christian history for an absolute fact. Well, uh, I've been you, writing about every single That doesn't mean you can't be arbitrary. And I, and, and, I, and, I, and I, bro, next thing, bro. God talking to you is so. Hard, Andy, bro. three dollars is the breath of God. The spirit is the spirit. Numa to Davar. The spirit of that rule out, but yeah, the breath of God can be spirit. Can be the spirit, yeah. Low tier 
one dollar this is the last time bryson ever hangs out with a white person <laughs> that's funny well emmanuel nah, I, I, I love white people <laughs> well emmanuel five dollars as long as you follow this broad path can you claim to follow a narrow path i don't know what that means Yon uh, the broad well if you look at matthew 7 what is the broad I know what path the gospel texts say i'm just saying i don't know what he means no, I think I think I think I, I think I know I might know what he means. Somebody's okay, response. Okay. That's fine. As if I know. Uh so broad path and narrow path, you're obviously referring to Matthew 7. And if you go to Matthew, Matthew 7, he clearly explains what this means. And then he says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, haven't I prophesied in your name? Haven't I cast out demons in your name? Haven't I done many mighty works in your name? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. A lot of Christians stop right there. But the next line, especially in the Greek, is is ye who work lawlessness. So the wide path is lawlessness. The narrow path is the law. Jan Vandersleet, $1. Bryson, if Christ is of the same essence, that means Christ is fully God. That was what I was trying to explain to him, that you can't have part God or uh, degrees of God, but he just never listened to that, so he doesn't. No, I heard you. You just, once again, y'all don't listen, but continue. Well, how do you have half God or part God in Jesus? I'm, I didn't say any of that. Like, I've you never did. made this claim. You said he's lesser. Yes, I said he's lesser than he's so, subordinate so, to the Father because he said he's subordinate to the Father. Let me ask you a question. So, you, no, no. You, I'm not, I don't think uh, you know what subordinate me. I don't think you know what the word subordinate me. If I'm subject to no, some you, subject you to somebody, think it am means, I subordinate? You think it means ontologically inferior, and I'm just trying to explain. Ah, I'm trying that's to a logical debate. Yeah. For, for, let's yeah, exactly. just use... Let's just so use I'm trying to language. figure out in what sense you can have half divinity or 75% divinity. That's why I, your position I, I, makes no I sense. I never made any of these claims. Let's you use, uh, you let's said use, he's not fully God as the Father. So how much God is he? I said he's not equal to the Father. That's simply Okay, so I how said. much God is he? He's God in the in the way that he's we are subject to so him. There's, question. So there's degrees of essence. Bro, can of I God. ask a question? So no, if because I'm subject you can't to answer you, that. If I'm if I'm subject to you, am I subordinate to you? We can be equal in nature and be and, my, and, and here we go. The same argument, bro. Once this is all I care about this debate. You can't even answer the basic question because you're going to use the I same just argument. I just the question. Time. You're too. You're too slow. You, did, to you, under, you, you can't no, understand you, you a didn't metaphysical. Answer it. You can't answer. You didn't answer. It. You don't know a metaphysical. It's yes or no. You're basic. If you're subject, it's not a, if you're sub, it's not if you're a, subject, it's, that's a false either or. If Ten you're full. subject to someone, are you subordinate to them? Yes or no. You can be subordinate in a role. And not subordinate in Here, metaphysics. So Jesus is subordinate to the Father. Yes or no? Of course, I'm even, a monarch. I'm a monarchical trinitarian. Oh, Maybe okay, you should uh, learn uh, about uh, that. Okay, okay, then. Okay, then. Thanks. Simple hack girl, ten dollar. Bryson, you didn't address the question of epistemology. You affirm a kind of sola scriptura. You're a Judaizer, anti-trinitarian, and you never address why you don't accept the decision of the canon of scripture at Trollo. How do you know you're correct? Uh, when you call me a Judaizer. Don't really care. It's the same question. I'm I'm done because I just don't cause it's gonna turn into a 30 minute one. Um, you call me a Judy as all you want, and I think you're a child of Satan for not keeping the law. So, yeah, but her question fine. was, how do you know that you have the correct epistemic criteria for things? Like I know that's can. the same thing you asked. I told you I'm done right. answering that question. It's gonna turn into the same okay. conversation 80 times. Low tier, uh, yeah, because you didn't answer it. You just said your position, yeah, okay, which is circular, yeah. which is a fallacy. Okay, yeah. So sure. are you are you okay with fallacies? I'm just curious. Like you think yeah, you can yeah, do for them? sure. You think you yeah, can for do sure. it? Okay, cool. Yeah. You can, yeah, yeah, you, can, you, can, you, you can move forward to the next comment. Okay, next low tier God. Uh, I'm ignoring the fact that, and I'm not reading that. Stop saying these this stuff, dude. Uh, my band. What is it, the N word? No, it's just it's stupid stuff. Concerned citizen, one dollar. Uh, I heard a chirp. I think Bryson needs to change the batteries and the smoke alarm. I don't know if you mean that as a joke or like literally. Judy Eisen. He's trying. He's trying to say because I'm black. Oh. You didn't hear it, but he's trying to. You know, you know the joke that black people always have. The um the smoke sensors always don't have batteries in it. It's a joke like black people oh, never do that. That's, that that's, that's, that's that at that my that. house. That's at my house too. So <laughs> no, but to be to be fair, to be fair, every time you see a, a black person live, you do hear that beep at random times, and it is kind of hilarious. I, I I love when the stereotypes like come true and like live stream, <laughs> so it's kind of funny. That person was actually kind of funny. Uh, as I as I said before, and once again, people are gonna get mad at me when I say this, but if y'all just simply re research, uh, just type in Jewish Christians, they have been there from the beginning, and the only criteria and qualification is to believe Jesus is the Messiah and believe that you still have the hold to the law of Moses. So, I mean, you may not like the answer, but that is a literal answer, that's a historical answer, and that's why. Okay, just continue. Um, 
Slayer P3, $3. Um, Bryson's already stated what his views are on those things. Uh, what do you believe about the church and the Bible? Um, you can respond to that if you want to. Uh, well, I did explain my view on pretty much everything. What I believe about the church and the Bible. Um, I'm just being frank. And, and, and once again, I'm not trying to be rude because y'all saw Jay Dyer on my page. I didn't treat him no bad type of way. And I disagree with a lot of stuff he said when he was re responding to my questions. I let him get his point across. Uh, but if I'm being frank, I don't believe people that don't give the commandments uh, have the Holy Spirit. Um, and I don't mean keep it in a metaphorical way. I mean, keep it literally as it's, as it's stated scripturally. Um, and, and that's my position. So I do not believe the one body can be a group of people that don't keep the commandments. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be honest, using the term Judaizer to describe people that teach, keep the commandments. I think that is in, in itself is not of God, period. Uh, and that's, that's my view, even though it's an unpopular one, it is a one I could prove with the Bible also. Bryson has Yankee wit with no, I don't know what that means. Nicholas John, $1 reads a book. Can't tell about the story spews verses. I don't know what that means. Uh, low tier God. No, I'm not saying that James $5 Bryson. Do you conduct? lectures uh i mean i teach about the bible all the time live streams youtube and real life people want to come hang with me but um when people around me i try to study the bible for real meaning you're not just you're not you're not just reading one verse you have to read a chapter and then quiz yourself on a chapter and um the goal is obviously to get 100 percent on each chapter uh and that's how you really understand if you know the bible if you if you take a quiz on the bible and you get humble. A lot of people get humble when they first take a quiz of a chapter they think they know and they get a 60% on the quiz and realize they're slow biblically. P. Divine, does Bryson's group adhere to a priesthood, a liturgy? Does it have inc incense or an altar or any kind of thing that would connect it to the temple and the and the synagogue? I love this. Uh, before I answer this question, I uh I love this 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 Bryson group thing. I think this is the, my favorite part of it. Bryson's group. Um, I mean, I would say yeah, but y'all would say no. I mean, oh, it's, so it's metaphorical. Yeah, but oh, I would oh, say yours okay. is metaphorical. Yeah. yeah oh, so double standard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Dan, $10. Do you accept apocryphal books or do you reject those? Which ones? Uh, me, that's me. That's one thing. I, um, I, I've i read them and it's a struggle for me because I don't, and obviously it's going to make a lot of people mad. I don't believe that a group of, uh, a group of people in a church or bishops can decide what's, what's canon or not. So I check the dates and then I, and then I'll read it and then I'll see how well it matches up. But they can tell um, you what the Gospels are. Okay. Back down that rabbit hole. Um, as I said, I I read I read a lot of apocryphal books. I have a lot beside me. I read almost everything, but um, I struggle with if, if it can be considered inspired or not, depending on what the context of it is. Dan, $10. Bryson, where do you derive authority for your interpretation of Scripture? How do you know that your interpretations aren't misguided? How would you, for example, implement... Uh, implement laying on of hands as mentioned in the new testament chapter verse context and i know that because a lot of uh catholics always send me this meme uh it's like something like uh don't care i trust the church files interpretations over yours uh which is fine and dandy but even they argued over interpretations of the bible um, and then people voted in a lot of times or seems like, to seems decisions. like, right. It seems like Jesus might've provided a way to solve these disputes. You think, I mean, the Torah had ways to, de to decide disputes, right? Yeah. The Torah had ways to decide. Disputes, okay. Correct? And then, so it was people like Moses and the elders who, yes. had, who had authority. Yeah, Mo Moses okay. was a judge. But Jesus, Moses, so in your view, Moses, people, people that Moses brought on. Uh -huh. So, judged, but in your they, view, there's no authority in history, in church history. I'm, Okay, once again, so just who, up who stuff, decides? You know. So Jesus does. Uh, but Jesus wait, didn't give anybody bro, to decide. Calm disputes. down. Let me make a distinction. What they judged on was sin, bro. When Moses no, made they interpret judgment, the law. They decide read. matters of the law. No, they didn't interpret the law. Yes, the law they did. My God, you're totally wrong. The, the, they did interpret the in law. The book in the book in the book of Leviticus, 
let's go. Let's let's use Leviticus four as just a random as a random thing. Leviticus four is about unintentional sin, and it shows you how to atone for that specific sin. But these are things that was given by God to Moses. So there was no whatever Moses said, it went. That's why if anybody went against it, or you brought it up in one of your videos, I think you talk about the um strange fire, then he got killed instantly. Uh, that's what happens. God tells you what to do, and you follow what God do. Nobody was making judgments on uh yeah, totally on what was canon. It, basic ignorance about judgments in the law. So literally, no idea what you're talking about. Young, I find Sneed. it funny because I know for a fact I know the Torah more than you, but it's, uh, it's okay. You can keep I don't think you, you have any clue what you're talking about. Because we can take quizzes. We can take, go, we can take quiz. We can take. Quiz, we can prove this. Really. You know, we can take quizzes on all these things live. And you let's could, see who knows. You the could most. have. You can have it memorized in the Hebrew. That doesn't. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're interpreting it correctly. It means you, I know more than you if I get a high score to you, doesn't it, though? Well, it, it would mean that you have it memorized, but you can memorize. And, <laughs> and it, by the way, this challenge is to anybody in the chat. If y'all so, want to go live, you're so if y'all, silly. Hey, hey, that if anybody you wants to go live with me, picture, you think picture, memorizing picture, it means you understand it. Those are two picture, different things. No, what it means, I know context. It literally says that Moses appointed elders to make judgments about the law. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> No, judging by the law means if you broke it or not. First, you need two or three witnesses, that means and then they interpret. see if you broke the law or not. Oh That's God. what it is talking about. That's, Young That's common Sneed, sense. Five dollars. Can you do a rap battle? Uh, I'll I'll concede that to to Bryce to Bryson. He he wins the rap battle. Nectarios ten dollars. Bryson. Different church fathers reject different books. Who cares if Matthew was accepted by people that you think are heretics? Was accepted by everyone. That's scripture already. No, it wasn't. Um, you said what? It wasn't. Who are who argues Matthew? What I'm saying is before before even Papias, it was already everybody already read the book of Matthew. How, well, how do you know that? You just you just assert these things. Where's what's your evidence for that? My evidence is as I said earlier, the way he talked about it. He didn't talk about it as if he created it or attributed the book of Matthew to Matthew. He talked about it was that's why he said it was originally written so in Hebrew. And they interpreted it the best they could. Originally written in Hebrew, and they interpreted it the best they could. Who was how they does interpreted? That, but why does that make it authoritative just because Papias said that? What do you mean? Why do you care what's what Papias said? You think he's a heretic? No, he is just there for historical ref. Oh, so Bro, this yeah, is common exactly. sense. Let me try to so explain. Why this are you one more relying time. on heretics for your view? So you admit it's it comes from us. It's not relying on heretics. It's the same you way just I can said prove it. Jesus. You just let me, lied. You, let you me, just lied. I'm not lying, bro. You have to you just be said, quiet. You just said he's a heretic. Listen. I'm not going to let you just the, say this stuff like what this, is, man. It's what crazy. is one of the evidences of Jesus dying on the cross outside of the Bible? Do, do, do you don't want to tell you? Use? That doesn't answer this question. That's irrelevant. It does answer the question. But you got to be quiet and let me finish making a point, my boy. Your, your points gracious. are deflections and irrelevant. They're not deflections. I'm, I'm trying to explain. It's hard to explain to you because you already have a set mind and you don't understand. One of the biggest evidences for Jesus dying on the cross is that somebody that didn't even believe in Jesus, who said Jesus was doing witchcraft, talked about how he died on the cross. I'm well that's aware one of all the, that. That's, that's how what, does that have I, to? That has nothing to do with the canon. It has how everything you know to do it. Just be, just no, because I'm going to Papi is because Papi is somebody even from understand the, the questions that are being bro, asked. I man. don't. I do understand. You don't understand. You talk too much, so you don't listen. No, you just I, talk too I, much. I already you see where you're wrong. Up sometimes bro, I already I'm see you. where you're wrong, you and I'm be, trying to explain to you where you're missing. You don't see why I'm wrong because you're not. You've been wrong about what I've been saying a million times. That's why you add your own interpretation. You're the most hard-headed person I've ever debated with. No, I'm hard. Hey, so so I just want to get it straight. The one that continues interrupting while somebody try to answer. That's not the hard headed one, guys. You're it's the one trying to explain and answer the question. The, it's not that's an the hard headed one. It's, Remember it's not that. An answer. If, if somebody talks before they listen, they're not you, hard headed. When the somebody asks, listens to this, when somebody then talks, asks you about that's the hard headed one. I, you don't Remember even know that. what we're talking that's about. The when somebody one. asks you about the criteria of knowledge, like how you know that, yeah. and yeah. you just speed through with this machine gun stuff, it's not answering the question because you don't yeah, understand I, that yeah. question. It's no, it's, it's no reason to even respond to you. So you can go to the next one. Right, because you don't know Useless. what that means, right? Just like oh, no, you, I, just I, like I, you I don't, know, I, just like you don't care about means. fallacies. That's right? why. Yeah. Okay. Right. So yeah, you, I you know, don't, you don't think, I know against so the, I read so all this fallacies stuff. don't matter I read, in debate. I, I read the Bible. I clearly know the scriptures more than you, but yeah, it's because I don't Dude, understand uh, you, the truth. All you're doing I mean, is that, talking about it, how you're, 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 you know more than everybody else. You understand that's just pride and pre Bro, that's all. That's all you've been doing this entire time. I never claimed I know more than you. When you claim that I don't know what I'm talking about, you're inherently claiming that you know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's common. I, fa I factually like, show. Y'all are so it. <laughs> When I factually Bro, show just, that you don't know go, what you're talking go. about. No, I'm like I've showed you. You don't know what you're talking about. You just make up stuff. <laughs> what did I make up? 
How many things do you want me to say? Name one. Literally, give me a number and I'll, I'll say it. You, you, name one that I made up. Okay, beautiful. Um, you made this claim, and this is going back to the Trinity thing. I'm about to debate, but your claim is that the reason that Jesus said I'm, my father's greater than I, it has to do with role, not essence. That that what you just said is something from I, church history, but it no, has no biblical evidence. It has it has no evidence. Secondly, you understand that it has biblical secondly, evidence because you have to interpret all of the verses to make them mm -hmm. work. Yeah, and secondly, what has been shown. Is that Secondly, you have an arbitrary uh -huh. standard by which you pick and choose whichever verses you want? And <laughs> no, anything, I don't. Listen, it's I know, a, I know the whole. I know the whole Bible is context. Uh, so, so yeah, again, and by the way, the, the second John thing, Barker, ten dollars. Bryson, do you understand Acts? It says that to Peter, you can eat things that are uh, formerly clean and uh, unclean. Now they're clean. No, it, no, it doesn't. Once again, this it is about biblical says ignorance. That. So the is literal it, reading is what you reject. Okay. So you incorrect, incorrect. Do you want me to explain it to you? This is and this is it. And by the way, this might be my last question. This, now I'm about to just definitely prove that I know more about the Bible. That was Dude, a always, metaphorical thing. You're making a an idiot of you. I'm trying to help you out. Uh, you're listen, be an quiet. Idiot. Let me answer. Shut up. All you're I, bragging I about like how saying, much you listen, know. I don't like saying. You understand shut up, that's not going to that's not going to fly you, over here. You, you have zero self control. That Bro, was a metaphorical all thing. All you're doing is drink. bragging. That was you a have, oh, and, you lack and you saying I'm just trying to friends. help you here is not bragging. No, shut up and let me finish, please. I'm trying to respect you the same way I respected you on my live. You interrupt too much, bro, and it is just downright. And no, this I don't do it. You. Shut up, shut up. Somebody asked <laughs> me a, a question. Debate. Let it's me answer debate. the question, Jay. If you deflect, are you going to be quiet and let me answer the question? Go ahead. Are you going to shut up? Genuine question. Are you going to be quiet? Stop telling me to shut up. It's my channel, bro. I don't, I don't care if it's your channel, bro. You interrupt too You're much. At some tell point, I gotta to tell you to shut up. I'm asking you questions. You're not letting Why nobody you answer your question. Are you? You don't though? answer. You just run away to another topic. No, I answer the. question. You don't. Even, how do you know? You don't listen. You had ample time to make your. Point. Okay, now you, I'm not just gonna ask you Tan. If you continue to interrupt me, I'm gonna just have to talk over you, bro. In the in in the book of Acts, you talk about a dream, and if you go read a dream, it literally tells you later in the chapter that it is about. The Gentiles being unclean. Now, this this one th thing right here just proves my point. Although y'all don't know what y'all are talking about, and if you don't believe me, go read Acts chapter ten, and you tell me what it says. Okay, it is talking about Gentiles being unclean and saying they are not unclean. That is the entire point of Acts ten. It literally tells you in the in the book in the chapter. P divine $3. read your Bible. P divine three dollars. Take back. Our bags, ortho bro. Google it, Christianity. James three dollar. Bryson, do you think I'm less human than my boss because I'm subject to him? Less human? No, you're just arguing the essence position. Um, what I said is that Jesus is subordinate to him, which you are subordinate to your boss. And you, and so you don't, all think, does you don't think something could be subordinate in different ways. This is your argument, correct? Not in essence, but in role. Correct. That, that's your argument. Fine. Correct. What I'm telling you is he is subordinate to the father, period. Yeah, so not an argument, saying. just stating your position. Okay. Christian oh, I answered him, so. 130. Bryson, do you have a favorite Bible book? Uh, A lot of them, bro. Um, I study the Bible a lot. I like John. I like the book of Hebrews. But uh, I love the book of Matthew. I love Deuteronomy. Um, I love the book of Job. Um, Matthew is my favorite right now because that's what I'm quizzing myself on right now. So, uh, that's probably my, that's probably my, yeah, that's probably my, uh, my favorite one right now. All right. So the ones that are just keep asking the same questions that we've been debating, um, not an expert for $10. This is another question about how does Bryson know about the authority of scripture? Let's just move past that when we've had it like 10 hey, times. Yeah. Just, just real quick for the, for the other person. And I'm, and, and I'm just being serious. I'm not trying to say I'm trying to help you because I know it all. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. If you go to Acts 10 and you start reading after verse 23, bro, and I'm, I'm just trying to help you, and your pride could be what it is. If you don't want to read it, I don't really care. But if you read it, it literally says, bro, in the excerpt, and he said to them, you yourselves know that it is forbidden for a Jewish man to associate with or visit a foreigner, and yet God has shown me that I am not to call any person holy or unclean. That is why I came without even raising it any objection when I was sent for it. So I asked, well, what reason did you send me? And if you read before that, there 
it literally says now his it's explaining the dream for you. Uh, and this is Acts 10. So again, a lot of these questions wouldn't even be asked if you just read it. A lot of people say Trump, but I don't think Trump can be antichrist because I don't think he's religious at all. Um, and he can't be arrogant against God and try to change God's times and laws. Like a lot of stuff that has to be attributed to the antichrist. I don't think it can fit him or Elon. Uh, could they be helping the antichrist? I mean, I would think Biden more so, but I, I hear a lot of the Trump arguments and the Elon arguments. Elon arguments makes more sense to me, uh, but some of the Trump stuff makes sense too. I'm just not sold on it. James Rover, a dollar. Bryson, are you aware that other esoteric groups have their exact beliefs before him? Do you know about Rita Gehr? Oh, no, that's the first thing I don't know about. I don't know what that is. Orthodox Monks, $5. Bryson brags about knowing the Bible and he can take a quiz and get 100%. Every heretic claims that they knew everything about the Bible and that they were self-interpreting goofuses like Bryson. <laughs> I mean that's that that's cute and all, but the Bible says study thy self approved. So, I mean, if you if you're okay with knowing less about the Bible and the and that you have the right interpretation, I think that is oxymoronic in nature. But uh, it's your it's your decision, is it, obviously. Is it possible that you're wrong or not? About what part? In any, any of the interpretations that you have. Um, as far as what the Bible says, no. But if you want to say, could I be wrong about the Trinity? I mean, possible because we we don't we don't really know. Uh, if that's actually a fact. Matter of fact, I mean, the church didn't even know for a long time, so that's why they argued about it. Um, I mean, but you could be wrong about a tranny, and one this could be true. I mean, one is seem to have they they seem to be solid too. Some of my favorite preachers are one is some of my favorite preachers are trinitarians, like David no, Lynn. Th those positions are ridiculous. I mean, one is one is ridiculous. Absolutely. I could literally debate you and use the one as position. I can also do it. Bro, I think, it's, I, also, I think it's time for you to retire from debates and learn a little bit more. <laughs> I think the only person I need to learn a little bit more is you. But okay. uh, you are very arrogant and uh, confident, even though I clearly know more about the Bible than okay. you. And I just proved it with Acts 10, just the ice yeah, on the cake. if the question is about who's correct, not who knows more, so. But I am also correct. Well, part of it, we, we can't say because you think All of this is overcompensation passed. for the poor performance in the debate. It's not convincing anybody, babe. Oh, I, mean, I don't care to convince a bunch of biased people in the chat, but I like I literally proved you wrong. Every well, step I thought everybody was. Okay. Oh, so hold on. They're not coming for you. The, you're saying that everybody that hates you comes to the chat. That's the only thing. Did, did you not read the super chat? Do you not see my Twitter? Orthodox and Catholic people, they can't stand me because I tweet Shabbat Shalom every Friday and the Saturday evening. Well, is it is it maybe if, possible if, if, if you're going to act like your your audience isn't biased? That's just being disingenuous. Just like if you came on, oh, just so like you came on my. So let me explain. If you came on my Instagram and use these same debates, the chat will say you got destroyed. So to 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 make a claim that your chat claiming you won, which I predicted would happen before no, I even went I'm into the conversation. I'm saying it because uh, you multiple times contradicted and committed fallacies. So I've never I mean, contradicted myself once, but you have. Are you, what about the fallacies? You, you think you said fallacies are no? Cool. I didn't. I didn't do any, that, that, I didn't do no fallacies. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Everybody saw it. So John Baker, ten dollar. Bryson, uh, do you not believe that the church is the new Israel and the kingdom of God? Jesus says no. Luke, Jesus says in Luke twenty one thirty one to thirty two that the church is the new kingdom of God. No, and when I say church, I mean I'm talking about the church you think is. No, because you can't be if you don't keep the commandments of God. So no. Yeah. So in other words, everybody got it wrong, right? No, just most. Of course. That's narrow path, wide path, common sense. That's that seems kind of arrogant to me. Like nobody figured this out until you. No, most people have been doing this since the beginning of since the beginning of Christianity. Most people have been doing your view since the beginning of Christianity. No, I never said most people. I said people have you been doing this. You just said most. You literally just said most. I don't if I said most, then I, that was an accident, but right. I don't think I said most anyway. P. Divine, I memorized a hundred of the uh, digits of pi, and now I understand pi and mathematics better than everybody. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you, I mean, he's not understanding the difference between comprehending and memorizing. It's two different things. Oh, that's envious, but it's okay. You think, you think I'm envious of you? Really? Um, no, I think, I think you're arrogant, but I think it's clear I know the Bible more than you, which is obvious. So. I mean, I, does this play well for your audience? Just constantly talking about how much, you know, and how well you know it. I don't, I, I'm baffled by this approach. I don't get it. Well, you don't get it because you're arrogant because in reality, you, you're the only one here I'm saying, I'm trying to help you. Wait, wait, wait. These, I'm you not say making these. This, this whole, this whole debate, you act like you, 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 you know more than me. Anything else? 
Are you so disingenuous, dog? No, oh my I, goodness, I like I might not even multiple... talk to you after this debate. You so disingenuous, bro. To be honest, you can continue going through the super chats. <laughs> okay, Dan uh, Bryson, do you not think that there's some body to interpret the law that's needed? No. Okay, Nick, five dollars. I was explaining he how he and other Bible only people think. If you read a book and you can recite it, then you know the passages perfectly and you understand the book. Yeah. So, I mean, you don't think there's a difference? No, it's not, it's not about reciting it. The issue with most Christians, if you actually read, just like I just proved to y'all with Acts 10, like objectively prove with Acts 10. You just read it. You uh, didn't prove anything. The problem, I proved that the dream was a representation no, of the you Gentiles. That, you literally, literally think reading something is the correct. No, no, no. You, you're not. It literally says that's what the dream was. This is how, this is how I know y'all are. Listen, that's no why disrespect. you couldn't answer any this, question about epistemology. I, I am so glad this Acts 10 thing happened because it proves that y'all don't know what the crap you're talking about. But the issue with most I Christians mean, is y'all don't read context. Y'all don't read context of what y'all be saying. It's a it's like the reason wild study, because the person the who reason doesn't study, know context the reason, is you. <laughs> the reason studying thyself approved is so important okay. scripturally. And the reason why not even it's not memorizing, it's really studying. The reason why it's so important is because you need to know the context. If I can recite to you the entirety of the Sermon on the Mount, that means undoubtedly I'm more likely to know the context of the Sermon on the Mount than you are. I'm not saying the, I'm not saying we're tired of hearing how much you know, man. It's not it's not flying over here. Nobody buys it. It's Nobody's not about buying it. That. You, you you ask the question. I mean, it's okay. I mean, you just want to talk about how smart you are. You, you you're the smart. No, I just a bunch of like saying I thought I thought it was so glorious to end it off like that though. Just Y'all reading a people. passage is not doing anything, man. I don't understand why you can't get that. Young, I told you the, the young, scripture literally says it's about the dream. I know what you think it says. I know what you think it says. Young Steve, five dollars. Okay. Bryson, do you know the scripture is better than Satan? Don't think you better say it? No, of course not. Nicholas John, $3. There's an amazing lack of self-awareness here. That's what I've been trying to say. Bryson, I agree 100%. It is a Bryson, lack of self-awareness. Three dollars, Bryson, Bryson for $3. Did the CIA set this up? Yes, they did. Thorium pion fusion, $5. Jay, he's trying to help because he knows the scripture is better than you. You should supplicate, bow, and compromise and submit to him. All right, that's the last super chat. Uh, Bryson is linked in the show description if you guys want to follow him. I'll also add his Twitter I, as well. I have one question for everybody in the chat, and this this will prove who's really arrogant and prideful and self-aware. I want y'all to study the Acts 10 tonight, and when it says, now while Peter was greatly perplexed in his mind about what the vision meant, and then it explains to you what the vision means, if you do not admit that you're wrong about Acts 10, then we know who's truly prideful. This is the difference between studying the Bible and uh, not so much, but uh, that's my last statement. I'm out. All right. Thank you, guys. Everybody have a good night.